scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will be. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will be. My altar is calling you. is calling you oh god let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to be very sit down, be very sensitive tonight. What I'm teaching tonight is not just a sermon. Is an office hallelujah I understand the mysteries of the secret place and it's by grace and the Lord has allowed me to share this and in the name of Jesus I believe that one of the graces that will come upon us tonight is the grace for the secret place hallelujah Psalms 139 verse 7 to 12 reveals to us that God is everywhere it was the psalmist that began to help us understand that it is not possible for a man to hide from God 139 when you read from verse 7 to 12 just write it for the purpose of the reference that God is everywhere is called his omnipresence the ability to be everywhere are we together I said where can I hide from your presence it's a question if i run there you are here if i go there you are there if i go there even in the midst of darkness you are there so it's an established fact from scripture that god is everywhere it's very comforting to know that that god is everywhere but then he does not meet with people everywhere understand this God is everywhere in his sovereignty and omnipresence. But the place of encounter has always been Old Testament, New Testament, and through eternity. God does not meet with people everywhere. In the dealings of God with men, location, atmosphere matters. Everywhere is not conducive for a meeting place with God. Just because this is a New Testament and Christ has died and all of that, the veil has been torn, does not mean everywhere is a conducive meeting place. 
Are we together? The concept of the secret place is one of the mysteries in scripture that is behind unusual manifestations of the life and the power of God upon a man. When you see any man, any woman, any pastor, any individual commanding unusual dimensions of the effulgence of the life, the power, the presence of God, then that individual is a person of the secret place. God is everywhere, but he doesn't meet with people everywhere. Hallelujah. When you want to have a business meeting with an individual, you don't stand by the roadside to discuss destiny altering businesses. Is that true? You find conducive places scattered across this nation. Probably this time right now are different important meetings happening. Is that true? And for those of you who are familiar with world events, the historic meeting that is going to be happening between the North Korean leader and Donald Trump. Look the time and the extent of the preparation that is going in because two world powers are going to be having a conversation that can decide the destinies of millions of people. And so the atmosphere, the location, the commitment, the hotels, the hospitality, the refreshment, every detail is going in. That's for men. And then we want to meet with God and host his presence. And then we believe that just because God loves us, atmosphere and location does not matter. Are we together? Every house, every home has several compartments that reflect the value of the people you want to meet. Is that true? There are visitors who can come and you just stand by the gate and discuss with them. Not because you devalue them. They, they, you, they have not earned the right to have access to your living room or your bedroom. There are a few people that you can grant access to enter the house. There are others you can grant access to your bedroom dependent on the quality and the level of discussion. God is a God of the secret place. I told you everything that is mighty and noble in the kingdom is hidden. The concept of God hiding himself is a concept that if we do not understand, especially for, um, especially for believers who are not very balanced, this is the, the imbalance that not knowing God properly creates. Because you will want to say, how, how does a God who loves people delight in hiding himself the bible says that god hides himself in light and you will wonder why i mean if god wants me to know him should he not be around chasing after me why make the pursuit so difficult and others even advocate that god is not hiding anywhere you have god once you have your bible you have god you see when people preach look at their proofs look at their results wisdom is justified by her children don't be gullible and just swallow everything just because people are well-meaning it is important that you vet their understanding by the proofs that they are what they believe they know is producing god hides himself it's a system in the kingdom everything that is glorious is never revealed it is hidden it is your pursuit that makes it revealed it's a kingdom system it's not even just for god when you buy how many of you have bought an expensive gadget do they give you the phone just like that no if you buy a phone or a television sometimes it's amazing how small the gadget is and then you see how big the um what they call it now whatever it is there's there's dunlop there there's another line there's another instruction written in german written in chinese written in english written in another language and all those details just for that little thing i've gotten a few gadgets in my life and i've been surprised at the rigor of opening them opening them alone sometimes you have to rest and wonder what you cut this you make sure you cut this why because of the value is that true so god who is most valuable cannot just sit down and say just because i love you no when it has to do with redemption god is not hiding himself he reached down to people but when it has to do with intimacy and our walk with god 
God does not expose himself carelessly. He hides himself in light. It's true. Are we blessed? Hence the concept of the secret place. I think it was a school of ministry students or so. I was, I was telling, was it yesterday or when was it? And, and I was telling them that everything that is glorious hides. Hides. It's called the mystery of the veil. Many people just believe that just because the veil has been torn, the veil has many meanings. The veil in the temple torn doesn't mean the concept and the idea of veiling things have disappeared. Everything that is glorious is covered. Are we together? Imagine if your heart was on your head. Do you know what your enemies would have done with it? Are we together? Just imagine that your heart was on your head where someone can hold it out of anger and squeeze it and kill you. So God decided to hide it and cover it with ribs because of the vitality. Someone can slap your face and you feel bad and it doesn't kill you. But someone holds your heart, squeezes it and does whatever, you will die. And so in his wisdom, because of the excellency of that organ, he hid it. Imagine if women get pregnant on their head. Think what the enemies will do with acid on those babies growing. Are we together now? And so God designed a system to make sure that the baby is hidden and safe while growing. Only revealed when the time is right. So the, the wisdom, the, the ideas about life help us to understand the principles of God. That everything that is glorious is veiled. If someone were to give you something and you check, you don't see the coverings around it, you will return it back. In fact, there are products that they say if you find out at the point of purchase that it is open, return it back. God is a God of the secret place. Psalm 91. That's our text for tonight from verse 1 and 2. Psalm 91 from verse 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high the first information that is revealed in this scripture is that it is possible to dwell remember the secret place is not the house of god are we together you can come to the house of god and fellowship you can be planted in terms of your consistency but here the bible is talking about something remember he never said them them it's not a corporate thing at all he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high the bible says shall abide under the shadow of the almighty verse 2 and i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust the secret place is real the secret place is not necessarily a physical location although although a possibility exists that a man can create a location and dedicate it to be a meeting point with him and god but the the idea of secret place does not necessarily mean a physical location the secret place is a spiritual state it's a posture that a man can take that allows him to access where god is very powerful the bible says whoever is in that secret place of the most high it says he shall dwell under the shadow that means god is there if it is the secret place you will find god there listen if it is the secret place you will find only god there there may be other beings around but when it comes to the secret place there are many things that happen upon Mount Zion, the house of God. Innumerable company of angels, the spirits of just men made perfect. But in the secret place is an affair between you and God. Not you and a prophet. Not you and an apostle. Not you and members. No. Not you and your wife. Not you and your husband. You and God. This is an art that our generation of people as serious as we are we are losing it we have prayer meetings 
a lot of corporate gatherings and as wonderful as they are many people don't know God in spite of their prayer and fasting because there are dimensions of God that have to be uniquely revealed to you when you are alone with him there are things God will never tell you when you are in a corporate place it's true when you are alone listen the bible talks about jacob being alone he was about to see his brother esau and he was afraid not knowing what will happen so he divided his possessions the bible said he sent his wives he sent everybody say when he was alone then a man came he created an atmosphere that became a secret place and a man came and he wrestled with that man he said leave me for the day breaker he said i will not let you go until you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie blessed him and the bible says the sun arose and he called that place peniel meaning the face of god because i have seen god face to face and my life has been spared If all of you is seen by everybody, you will not be mighty in these end times. There are dimensions of your life and dealing with God that is not even for public consumption. There are things God tells you that is not for preaching. They are his customized dealings that should serve as the foundations for your spiritual stability. Not everything you receive from the secret place is shareable. There are things you receive from the secret place. If you share it, you will lead people into error. Because it was a unique communication that was peculiar to your level of alignment. It is not healthy to share those things. There are instructions that if God gives you and you obey, if another person obeys that instruction, it becomes the reason why he falls. Are we blessed? The secret place. The place of the dealing of God with men. Men are not made just in church alone. Men are made in the secret. And when I talk of men, I'm not just talking of men in ministry, like pastoral ministry. Men are made in the secret place. So the secret place is real. It is a location spiritually that can also be reflected by a physical location. Remember, I've taught it in this house, the law of consistency. Come, Mike. If the law of consistency is, is the scripture that the Bible says, whosoever you serve, the slave of that person you will become thereof. It's just paraphrasing. That means that if um, I go to pray, you will be surprised that I can struggle with prayer because I'm really doing it in the flesh. But it's not to be discouraged. I will go back again and do it. I will go back again the fourth, fifth, sixth time. As I keep repeating that activity, I am whatever spirit on earth is responsible for prayer which of course is the Holy Ghost, but the dimension of his operation that supplies grace and the staying power in prayer is being attracted through my consistency. You see that? A day will come I will go for prayer and live back in the power of that spirit. From that day, you can't stop praying again. Are we together? It's true. Even in your sleep, you will be praying and wake up because they, you have become a slave to the influence of that spirit same thing with giving give you can frown and carry your seed and god gives you an instruction and you are angry and then because the grace for it has not been given but you continue in obedience your consistency is drawing to your life that grace is called the power to lay it down the grace that conquers greed a day will come when that grace overwhelms you, at that point, there is nothing you cannot give God, including your life. And like Jesus, you will say, I have the power to lay it down. There is nothing God can give you. At that point, he can give you everything because he knows you will release it. So you can see two people 
and one can easily give he can carry his whole salary he can carry his life savings and another person will give 10 naira and come back and say are you aware that i gave 10 naira today See, I used to give five naira before, and even me, I'm impressed with myself. That person is operating just in the flesh. Of course, God is, is a faithful and merciful God. But when people are operating by the Spirit, how you know is that they are under the influence of that Spirit. It's not something mechanical again. When the Spirit of Revelation comes upon you, whether you are studying the bible before you preach or not it's only you that will know nobody walking with you will know that this guy has not read the bible for one month it's only you and god you will never use the 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 limitation of revelation because the spirit of revelation through your consistency of scripture has come upon you and rested upon you are we together and because that dimension of the spirit has rested upon you you will find out it is possible to close your bible for one year and yet you are teaching volumes of series it is only you and god that will know that you have not been opening your bible but you will be surprised that you are quoting scriptures you know nothing about you can open your bible on stage like this like i'm standing to preach and on stage when you are about to preach that's when your sermon comes in less than one second because the spirit of revelation is upon you you can literally get up to preach not knowing what to say and people think you have been preparing for 10 days one week for the conference and you finish that's why you see all these things are not necessarily measures of spiritual maturity because there is a grace follow me tonight oh. are we together the secret place The tragedy with many believers is that they think they will know God by reading a book. Many believers think they will know God just by listening to a man talk about him. All these things are stimulators, but the Bible says the scriptures testify of me. That means the scripture should lead you to want to know a man. The scriptures are a testimony. You heard about koinonia for those of you coming for the first time you listen to a message and it propels something in you let me come to that place that's how it works when your experience just stops at reading the bible then you did not maximize the purpose the scripture must lead you to an encounter when i say things like this most people think i'm being arrogant but i have said it for many years that the way our generation is seeking god we will not find him that way we pride ourselves in finishing the bible from cover to cover and we move around saying i know god i've read the bible 30 times it's valuable i've done this and that i'm in every prayer meeting and you see a lot of spiritually ignorant people bragging around we believe that the knowledge of god is in the volume of spiritual activities no sir no sir you know a man by giving that man time time is a component in intimacy there is nobody that knows anything without committing time to it no sir we are used to fast everything fast food fast whatever you can walk to a restaurant now and while you are talking they are frying the egg for you they just turn it flip the burgers you have we carry that same attitude god you are king i'm educated i have an msc reveal yourself just in a nutshell god in a nutshell lord in a nutshell just let me know how the, your principles work no sir that's why we are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth do you know about finances yes i know do you know about the anointing i even know there are seven dimensions of the anointing go to isaiah 11 and we we do it like we are rapping and at the end the gates of hell are said i like these people continue priding yourself and then you find out that the emptiness there is no substance of the knowledge of god that's why our convictions dwindle you watch people who claim they love god let a little challenge test them and they will they will they will cause god to his face lord i thought you would give me the job i everything was all right they even called me to congratulate me lord were you not there when i was quoting the scripture and all of a sudden the employment list comes out 
and it's not there and you are crying for two weeks God you must appear and answer me and God says that is all you know about me Sir King Salama Sir King Aljana Yabone say Yabone na kao Sujata ne na kao Sir King Salama Sir King Aljana Listen, in this end time, you must pay the price to know God for yourself. The, listen, this corporate knowledge of God will not stand the test of time. The days that are coming will require, the Bible says, but the people that do know their God, that do know their God, they are the ones who will be strong and will do exploits. There are things I know about God I will die believing. The rate at which believers vacillate convictions is a proof that we have not encountered God. It's amazing how someone can believe something today and walk in that conviction, write books about it, and two weeks later, he's not sure again. You can't mentor a generation like that. Unbendable conviction based on something you have seen. A man of God that is into great deliverance um, was confronted by another man and said, look, you are always doing this thing. The people said, stop misleading these people. And he looked at him. He said, why are you talking like this? He said, go and find out about my educational qualification and everything I had. For me to leave all of that and be doing what I'm doing, you should know that it's not just that I read a book. There is an encounter. What I've seen is too real. I'm just pitying you because very soon you will need me. That's what the man told him. He said, you are under attack. That's why you are talking. My knowledge has shown me that whoever talks like you is under attack. Sir King Some months ago in this nation, I'm not one who comments on things that happen on social media, but I understand there was a debate that had to do with tithing. Shame on the church. Shame on us times infinity for being so confused because a man who didn't have any right just got up and wrote a proposition. It's proof that we have not been doing it by faith. It's proof that it's not a derivative of a dimension of God we've had. That means someone can get up today and say, hey, Jimmy, loving your wife is sin. And all of a sudden, he looks at this woman and says, I know you gave me two children. Walk out of my house. Why? Because a man said, loving your wife is bad. We become slaves to the ideas of people. Just because they are bold in communicating the idea does not mean they are right. Our generation is an arrogant generation. In the height of our failure, we are still bragging. You need to know God to survive the pride of this generation. You will meet somebody who will tell you, I'm in business, I don't tithe, I don't give, I'm a millionaire. Keep watching. When he finishes deceiving you, he will crash and repent and start tithing while you are suffering from his teaching. Many people today who have advocated error have repented quietly and they are doing what they once misled people into. But many other people are there suffering. Are we blessed? We need to know God for ourselves. We need to know God for ourselves. This generic knowledge of God... <clears throat> That's why for many of us, every little thing, you are looking for someone. There's nothing wrong with someone agreeing with you. But I mean, 
something touches your head um please ejimi are you awake benga are you awake promise are you awake uh, Paso alpha who can i call when, when will you know god for yourself then you now text the people back and say pray then they say okay and pray didn't you know is that a news if you do not know god for yourself then let me tell you when god begins to expose some of us you know the privilege that god has given me to meet people sometimes i sit down and i hear them talk i can't believe a man can be this arrogant in error just because there's small money or small results around you hear people talking being sarcastic or men of god and you look at that person and you know i can look at a man and know what spiritual law you are breaking and know what consequence is waiting for you even while you are bragging ah, i insulted a man of god i did this and that and i went in peace look at the foolish man that is talking the bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake the person is laughing 10 years later, you will see the man at a railway station just standing with his shoes. That's how what happened. That prophecy kept trailing him like a policeman trailing a thief. And he thought just because he was free for two, three years, the word of God will stay till it judges everything. The secret place. I'm going to share with you six things. Six dimensions that we access through the power of the secret place and i want you to be very sensitive this has helped me in my life number one the secret place is the place of brokenness brokenness write it down isaiah 51 17 Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana, Ya Bone Naka, Bone Naka, Sujada, Sujada, Sir King Salama, Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana, Hallelujah. Sorry, give us Isaiah 55. 55. 6 to 7. Isaiah 55. It says, Seek ye the Lord. 6 to 7. While he may be found. That's a very dangerous scripture. Where will the Bible say, While he may be found? This is not talking of salvation, no. This is not born again. There are dimensions in God that require timing. It, it, it will take, let me tell you, a man who begins to seek God at 80 years, you will find God, but there are dimensions. The remaining lifetime you have will not afford you to grow and transit and metamorphose spiritually to access certain dimensions of God. He says, seek him early while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seven. He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to God for he will abundantly pardon. Brokenness. Let me tell you this. Brokenness um, is not necessarily for sinners. Pride has almost killed men of God in our generation this holier than thou mentality whenever i talk about brokenness like this there are people who just say hey, it doesn't let's get to power part listen brokenness is a state of the heart that declares your consistent dependence on god the bible says a broken and a contrite spirit god will not despise do you know why many of us although we feel qualified we never find god because we believe that standing in our self-righteousness based on what we believe we have and know god should anoint me brokenness brokenness show me a man that can be broken towards god i show you a man who the devil will never have access to him look at david 
Moses was a man who walked with God very faithfully. The Bible says he was the meekest man on earth. Yet, Moses could not enter the promised land. Do you know that? Just because God told him to speak to the rock and out of anger that was justified, he took a staff and hit the rock. God said, that's it, you are not going. He joined all the other people who could not make the promised land. But here is David. Search me, O oh God. Let me tell you the posture of those that God will use in this generation. Search me, O oh God, and try my heart. It says, if there is any wicked way in me, you don't have to manifest it yet. It can be there, waiting until you have an estate. Nobody knows that one day you can insult a woman the age of your mother. You are not yet rich. So you will think that just because I'm an obedient young man, who would have known that David one day will kill Uriah and sleep with Bathsheba? Put a man's death sentence and say, go and die. A nice shepherd boy please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord i open my heart search it brokenness it's a language that our generation hates but let me tell you it is the secret the number one proof that you are a man of the secret place is that consistently it is not sin that destroys men it is the pride of an unbroken heart before god it is not weakness and limitation that destroys men. It is the pride of an unbroken heart. Nebuchadnezzar was brought to his knees until he was broken. Pharaoh was brought to his knees until he was broken. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm not ashamed that whatever you find in my heart, but I come to you just as I am. Let there be a brokenness. Sir King Aljana, ya bone na kau, sujada ne na kau, Sir King Salama, Sir King Aljana, ya bone na kau, sujada ne. Psalm 139 verse 23 Brokenness One big key in my life Show me a man that is broken and contrite before God I show you a man whose rising cannot be stopped by any cause Any gate, whatever it is He says, search me, O God And know my heart Like a man knows his wife Know my heart He said, try me and know my thoughts 24 He said, and see if there be any wicked way and lead me to the way everlasting that's a man before god that's that's the posture that can bring the presence of god attract the presence of god to a man every time we stand before god believing lord why are you using this man there are people who see certain of our orthodox pastors and they stand as young people full of themselves and say this this reverend this man he doesn't even speak english well why is god using him why is the man rising whereas i am here i'm a fasting giant i have this knowledge i have that i have this and yet the ministry does not grow do you know why because that man is not sound in the word and he knows it so he goes to god and say lord if you depend on my teaching these members will not grow i come to you with my limited revelation can your grace speak for me and god says the little prayer you pray for the members i will amplify it because it's coming from a broken heart let me tell you pride kills when you see people arrogant for a long time they have left the secret place I can know whether you are one who is of the secret place by the consistency of self-glorification and pride. 
if up to one month in your life passes without you seeing a need to spend time with God alone it's a sign your life is under attack hear me if you're a man of God here listen twice don't be carried away by some of these little accolades in ministry oh they invited me here i went to this country a senator met with me he said you are the greatest man of god in the world while they are saying that keep your ears to the throne lord what are you saying in the midst of that club god can say finish that meeting and let's meet where we usually meet you will enter there and god will never talk to you about a senator god will say i'm already seeing there is I, I want to bless you with 100 million but there's, there's something I'm seeing that 100 million would destroy you and say God me I just a senator I would have prophesied to you. God say keep quiet I am God brokenness many of you stopped growing spiritually for a long time you didn't backslide but you didn't grow either because you are doing a lot of corporate things retreat now is, is a language many people don't even know what a retreat is they think retreat is fasting so they just close their door and fast and answer calls all through from morning till night gone are the days when people lock themselves and say sorry you are not going to see me for the next two days please hear me god is speaking to us if you don't practice retreats you will not survive the darkness of today it's true no matter who you are retreats retreat is not when you gas out spiritually and you see that kai no grace is working in your life no you must find time i'm busy i'm busy is a trap of the devil no if police arrest you now you are not too busy to attend to the people if an ambrober detains you somewhere you will say ambrober i'm busy come the day i'm free the power of brokenness have you come to a position where the secret place has broken you read you off your pride and everything you know there is no brokenness by how we speak uh, the other day someone just called me and is that i don't want to talk too much but ah at my level now you know then we now wrap it up with a religious all glory to god it's a lie it's a lie all glory to god first comes from the heart before the mouth hallelujah Is God speaking to us tonight? Some of us need to find time just by this message. God is telling you, I love you, but you have, you have worshipped me corporately. But that fellowship we used to have, something is wrong. Return to it, oh. Return to it. Return to it. That fellowship is not there again. Even when you didn't have money for hotel, you were having time for God. Now that you can pay for any hotel or any place to stay with God, you are no longer spending time. We only run to God when there is trouble. Then we just run and say, God, I've come again. Is it not you? You are God, I'm a man. But let's not know. Lord, I come to you. I stand before you. And I know that it is by your mercy and by your grace. Lord, I thank you. David. A man after not God's money you can be after God's money you can be after God's anointing you can be after God's fame but a man after God's heart please I like us to write it if you are writing I return to the place of brokenness genuine brokenness it will show in our conversations when we are broken you always acknowledge that I am what I am by the grace of God. There are arrogant statements, especially from we men of God, that are testaments of our absenting ourselves from the secret place. Number two, please take it down for me. The secret place is the place where we find the mercy of God ah. in recent times I have caught a revelation of God's mercy in a way and a manner I wish I knew this 10 15 years ago not that I don't know about the mercy of God but the idea many people have about the mercy of God is the reason why they never at all access his mercy 
do you know that the mercy of God is one of the major keys that many people are looking for in this life not even favor mercy first our idea about mercy is that mercy is for sinners so we pride ourselves that I'm not a sinner I don't need mercy Lord what I need is revelation <clears throat> the place of mercy Psalm 86 verse 5 we'll read a few scriptures quickly Psalm 86 verse 5 we find mercy in the secret place for thou O Lord art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy to who not to all believers please help me plenteous in mercy unto them that sin unto them that fast unto them that call upon you if you call upon him he knows you are calling upon his mercy the mercy of God the mercy of God you call upon the mercy of God and see him move beyond your faith level call upon the mercy of God and see him move beyond everything in your life when you invoke the mercy of God he moves because of his his son Jesus Christ it has nothing to do with you again it has everything to do up there are people who are prosperous even though there's still a cause in their life that cause has not been broken but they are still prosperous because their language all the way is messy as the arrows that fly by day is coming they have no knowledge of spiritual intelligence but mercy please help that lady the mercy of god oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. Lamentations 3 and 22. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not what? Consumed. Consumed. Because his compassions fail not. That means even when I didn't know the spiritual laws that would have kept me, I still saw results that were not accounted to my knowledge spiritually and later now that i know that this is the law responsible for this result i'm wondering why i was getting the result anyway because by the time i started getting the result i was not yet obeying that spiritual law i didn't understand the mystery of exemption i didn't understand the mystery of praise yet the rewards of exemption were following me and the bible tells me the secret that it is because in your ignorance you were able to provoke the mercy of god if God were to wait for us to obey every single spiritual law allocated for our victory, some of us would taste victory when we are 97 years because our rate of assimilation compared to our need for the result is very low. So he introduces his mercy. I know you are, you are, you, based on the way I deal with people, if you if you don't tithe consistently but something has happened in your life and i noticed for four months you have not been tithing ordinarily based on the terms of justice you should not receive this reward coming but you were wise enough immediately you called my mercy he overrides the four months not tithing and then he doesn't justify you but he gives you this to show that i am god he said because his compassion failed not do you know what his compassion is? The ability to be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He is aware that you are a man. Ah. So, when God gives Sam an instruction and says, Sam, remove your suit and sew it. 
and then for some reason sam is struggling maybe because when he grew up he was taking care of all his family members and the little time now he's been able to do something for himself god is now saying to show god knows it's not easy because he has gone through pains and so when he disobeys god god doesn't say you disobey me i will judge you compassion makes him to examine the condition and say no if i were sam what would i have done no i i shift beyond I, I'm not justifying this, but Sam, I have been touched with the feelings of your limitation. I still qualify you. This is God. Oh, oh, oh. I started experiencing in my life before I ever understood the spiritual principles that control that result not many men of God will tell you what I'm telling you most people will make it look like all their result is a direct reflection of their total obedience is a lie no how many of you men of God have gone to preach and you were too tired to pray you just lay down open your eyes and it was time for the vigil there are times that I'm so tired, I leave Koinonia here. And before I get home, it's past one. I have to leave five o'clock to catch the flight. I'm there, there is a delay. I'm arriving and all kinds of things. And the meeting is already on. And sometimes all I do is just lie down on my bed. And I say, Lord, I know this part of you. It is your mercy that I need in this meeting. And all of a sudden, that anointing comes again. I know that the angel of his presence is with me within that room. Not because I, I honestly took out the time to pray i will be lying to tell you i prayed eight nine hours for every sermon for the results you get it's not true there are times that all i did it was in the plane i was sleeping i didn't even know until we landed and got up dragged myself like that went to dress and there i'm going in the meeting and everybody has been fasting for two weeks apostle is coming and you who is preaching you have not fasted you are tired is you stagger yourself on stage but suddenly I know what this thing is, oh. Sirkin Salama, Sirkin Al Janna. Psalm 25, verse 6 to 7. While I was studying this, I stumbled across that scripture and it blessed me in no small way. He said, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Next verse. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. He said, no, my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Listen, there are many of us that if you pray this prayer, many parents today are suffering the consequences of the sins of their youth. They did something when they were young and it followed them forever, forever. And their children's children, they are not exactly under a curse. It's just the rod of judgment that is upon them. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. There are people here before you knew God, before you knew anything about God, you even came from an abused family. So there was no hope of knowing anything about God. You almost shredded your life into pieces. It was even when you came to university, you got born again. But there is a backload of a lot of spiritual laws that have been intertwined together. Remember, not oh God, the sins of my youth, nor my... Now listen, 
there is a difference between sin and transgression let's assume you lived a very nice life what of transgression violations of ordinances whether through ignorance or disobedience lord remember not that in 1995 i should be tightening i was criticizing men of god in 20 in 2000 i should be filled with the holy spirit and i said god forbid i blasphemed against the holy spirit remember not my transgression he said according to thy mercy not according to thy wisdom according to thy mercy remember thou me for thy goodness sake these are mysteries in the bible that's why some people will keep getting angry with a lot of people you will see a woman the woman is not so wise she's not so intelligent she's not so learned she has been a widow since the children were five years but you see help coming from everywhere mama what is the secret she'll say all i know is one song one song of mercy that i sing all the time and then another arrogant person i went to yale i went to this i went to that in fact hey, don't worry i know that they will elect me it's just that i'm being patient until this guy becomes president the guy becomes president for eight years and goes you are nothing for you if you can learn to provoke god's mercy when blind Bartimeo, Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time, he didn't say, Jesus, I am obedient to, I've been listening to your message. Jesus would have said, they're not obedient enough. You only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete, not around. He said, thou son of David, have mercy. Hold on. Was Jesus the son of David? No. The son of David was Solomon. So you will say you are calling Solomon. Oh, don't call me. Solomon will come and help you. But he knew something. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And then he turned. He said, what do I do? He said that I will receive my sight. The mercy of God. Many of us come from families whose parents were wicked to others. And if God is to, no matter how innocent you are, the wickedness that some of our loved ones, some of our loved ones had jobs, they stop young people from rising. They are carrying on their head the woes and the pain of bleeding people. Forget that they repented later on. It will take the mercy of God to advocate for them. Oh, Hallelujah. When Jesus appeared to me, I will be lying if I was, I, I always seek the Lord. But at that time, I was not on any special fasting program. I was not on any special word program. I, I'm not sure I was even studying my Bible. Just lying down quietly. And then he came. What brought him? Mercy. People ask me today, I want to see Jesus. I tell them, I don't know how, I don't know how to help you see Jesus. I know how to help you love God. But to see Jesus, the equation, even me, I don't understand the food. I just know some variables. Nobody knows all the equation. What do you add plus what equal to seeing Jesus? You add it and see whether he will visit you this night. Because you can sit down here crying for an encounter. And Jesus will leave you and go under the bridge in Kaduna. And wait for someone by 1 a.m. who is busy insulting the stupid men of God there comes jesus he says i am jesus and you are saying with oh, I'm, I'm here fasting jesus this is not fair i thought you say you reward those who diligently seek you because in the midst of that he's ranting compassion is interpreting what he's saying he's not really insulting god he's saying i'm a confused young man looking for help god hears the voice of your mouth but he hears the voice of your heart that's why you can be saying stupid things and God is answering something else. Because while your mouth is saying something, your heart is saying something. Years ago, I was speaking to one guy who, I don't know, the, the guy smokes all kinds of things. And I sat down. I was, remember him? Remember that gentleman, Jimmy? Very funny guy. He was under, I think he was under the bridge in Kwangila, Kwangila Bridge. 
this guy came to be part of us and within less than two weeks he started entering dimensions of encounter with jesus there's somebody that was a i mean you look at his life as if there is nothing but in the midst of that what his heart was saying is lord i need you whereas you physically your mouth is saying lord i need you but your heart is saying lord i'm fine by myself god does not just listen to your mouth your heart too has a voice that's why he said try my heart oh lord give me money and your heart is saying lord i'm on a revenge mission i need to prove to people i'm not a failure and god says your heart and your mouth is conflicting but someone else can say i will never tight and what the heart is saying is lord i'm frustrated if this thing is real reveal to me number three the secret place is the place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort oh how you need this in this troubled world let me give you an advance notice everyone you know has the potential of disappointing you everyone i think it's a revelation you need to note today everyone born by a woman born again or not has the potential to disappoint you disappoint you in business disappoint you in ministry disappoint you in marriage disappoint you in every regard when people say a pastor disappointed me i thought he would make me a deacon i've been there for him he didn't make me a deacon i i thought i thought i'm not the last but what are you saying that's a man for you but there is a place that god provided where the weary can find rest and comfort you're a man of god listen to this i was sharing with a dear friend today on phone in the afternoon and he was so weary and tired spiritually and i was a distant friend somewhere and i was just advising him i say you see this work that we do ba we look busy but our lives are very lonely you need to know how to find comfort in god otherwise if you can't find comfort in god you will start finding comfort in movies you will start finding comfort somewhere you will now i'm not saying it's wrong one day you go to football viewing center where someone that's behind you go and kill you there have you learned to find rest and comfort in god that's why some of us get into the mistake because of the obsession to share your problem with someone the pain overwhelms you you don't choose who whoever is there for you emotionally at that time you run your mouth and tell people intricate details about your life about your family when you are done with the gist you don't know what to do with yourself again because you have messed up your entire life they used to respect your father and your mother until one day you open your mouth and told the people wrongly do you know that i'm not the first child of my father i i it's a long story uh my my father pregnanted one zimbabwean woman 10 years before i came and the person you are telling is not even matured spiritually it's just that your heart was looking for the secret place and because you didn't have it you had to search for someone be careful this is particularly for ladies because ladies you are designed to be expressive you always want to be heard be careful you would destroy a lot of good things in your life there are people who sat down in restaurants talking about the contract that their husbands got and the person sitting at the other side of the table was an arm robber the guy had finished eating but he refused to stand up and go because she was sharing him god is faithful oh sorry i'm meeting you for the first time am i talking too much and then instead of the friend to say yes they say no 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 i'm okay then you continue talking god is faithful as we, as we are he even said he's buying a jeep for me as i'm talking to you now there's twenty thousand dollars on our bed eh? the way the bed is it's a six by eight seven and under you know that kind of bed while you are talking the arm robber is nodding i say in fact i didn't even tell you where we live do you know that we moved recently you know that that one white house and in the night that man is just there and comes with accuracy and looks for you and say remember you were describing your house for me lie down and it shoots and kills everybody don't allow your mouth destroy your destiny are we together there are men of god 
who carried their church problems out of pressure and took it to politicians instead of taking it to God. Sir, just to let you know, forget all this one that we laugh on TV. Oh, the truth is that the bills that are on our head, we need 200 million by Friday. And the senator said, oh, really? Ah, um, and you always look sharp like this. <laughs> That's how we do it. It's your industry. And all of a sudden, one day you go somewhere and say, all of you lift up your hands. And the senator is in a beer parlor watching you. I say, look at these idiots. The other day I was with this man and he was begging me for 200 million because only God should have heard that. You left him in search for what only his secret place can give you. Are we learning something tonight? Hmm. The secret place is a place of rest and comfort. Psalm 27. Please media help us first. Psalm 27 from verse 13 to 14. We'll read four serious scripture. Psalm 27 verse 13 to 14. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. No matter who you are in life, because of disappointed expectations, because of our goals and our dreams not happening when and how we want it to be there are times that you can be weary as a man of god you trust god for increase in membership you are pouring your heart do you know one of the most heartbreaking thing for any man of god is to truly pour your heart to members and people and not see them growing at the rate that matches your sacrifice except you are not an honest man of god it will pain you sometimes when i get text messages from people i truly tears fill my eyes i just start because it's painful the time it takes to prepare just one sermon you see that and then all of a sudden very unwise decisions that come from those things and your heart just bleeds are we together at that time you will be tempted to call a friend call somebody or whatever confident now you must learn to wait on the lord lord i bring before you these church bills lord i love you but the bills in my family are almost killing me the bills in my church almost killing me lord i come to you because nobody can understand me nobody understands me they all think i'm a wicked woman but lord you know my heart i come to you and the lord says find rest this is where you can be understood it is powerful to be understood unfortunately life does not give you that kind of opportunity with men it's difficult for men to understand you but there is one there is a place brothers and sisters that you can go where you know god understands you hallelujah wait thou upon the lord psalms 91 and verse 4 to 5 then we look at 62 and verse 1 to 5 if god is god speaking to you tonight psalm 91 and verse 4 he said he shall cover thee look at this come he gives you a picture of a hen or an eagle is that true you know how eagles protect their young ones they spread their feather and cover them while they are under they just cover them in other words let let me see let me see the the animal let me see the 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 predator in the wilderness that will come near you i know you are fragile in yourself but i cover you he said he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust then his truth shall be your shield and buckler have you experienced that dimension of god that people can be insulting you many of us have not risen to places you know for some of us who god has granted grace in ministry small it's painful to pour your heart there are times that you can do everything you are doing and all of a sudden someone may be listening to a colonial message and say all these pastors all they are looking for is your money i don't trust any pastor in nigeria they are all stupid people they all use your money it's all church money you see all of them dressing is all your money they are using when you hear that kind 
kind of thing no matter how you are sometimes as a human being it can touch your heart because you know you are sincere but there's no one to explain to and god doesn't even allow you to explain anything to anybody at such times his presence and he says my son i'm the only person on earth you owe explanation and if i've credited you it doesn't matter who and what they think comfort and rest someone looked at me and said apostle how do you get motivated you are always happy i said you think so if i if what is on my head comes upon you you will collapse physically immediately not after a few weeks immediately 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 success is a burden it's a burden you should pray to be prepared before you pray it comes to you are we together yes success i think it was last year i went to buy suya in the night i was just playing a song and someone just knocked the door of my vehicle i just went down and then i i looked at the lady and she was jumping she said, ah, apostle you buy swear i mean that's my life what 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 sort of embarrassment is that that that's the burden of being successful what what is what is wrong with swear is swear tobacco just that i stroll in the night to just make myself happy you see when you become great everything about your life is everybody's business and it can be a burden it can be a burden sometimes people will call you in the night and you say you are sleeping say i'm surprised you are sleeping look at that kind of stupid text you see that and it can make you feel guilty sometimes you will think it won't enter you but sometimes you feel guilty because truly that time you may have planned to pray it's just that sleep took over you the people make you feel bad and you stand up saying because of this i must go for three days dry to prove there's, there's nothing to prove my brother Go to the secret place and find rest and find comfort. Many of us don't know how to find rest in God. We don't know how to find comfort in God. That's why we find comfort in things. That's why we find comfort in people. You find comfort in a friend that disappoints you. You move to another one that disappoints you. Then you go to a pastor that disappoints you. Then you go to a film that disappoints you. Then you go to a drink that disappoints you. Then you go to a club that disappoints you. Then you say, I hate life. Like Solomon, you now say, vanity upon vanity. All is. I have learned to find comfort in his presence i remember one time when the crowds were increasing here i was concerned about the rain and i said lord what do we do what do we do there are several people coming you know several people and they will keep coming what do we do that time sometimes because the venue may not be available uh, the alternatives we used to use then were very inconveniencing i had to go to god look at moses do you know what happens when you are a leader people expect you to have answer to everything even what they don't have answer for they are very okay with themselves they pity and excuse themselves but they look at you and say you should have an answer for this they looked at moses and said moses you don't know also if you don't find a way of parting this red sea we are taking it gently now we will butcher you here make swords from the gold we took from egypt and kill you here and and put your monument and moses said just take it easy wise man he ran to the presence of god lord what do i do i need i need comfort these people are wearing me and he says stand still he said take your rod go and tell the people to move forward learn to draw strength in his presence learn to retreat when people look at you and do all kinds of things you have neighbors that are nagging and troublesome you have people in your office who are always misunderstanding what you are doing you have people who will bribe and cheat and live their lives anyhow and you have made up your mind that there's no bribing there's no cheating if it's 10 naira for the organization i'm returning it and they look at you and say holy holy stupid person are we all not chopping somehow in nigeria even that company said is it not with bribe they started this company and they try to make you feel guilty at that point my soul went down upon the Lord wait thou upon the lord psalm 62 verse 1 to 5 quickly if we're unable to finish we'll continue next week psalm 
some of you this message you don't need it now just keep rising the time will come you will need this message daily you will search for this message and sit down and weep while you hear right now you are not sowing any seed but people are giving you their harvest so you think it's your faith that is working a time will come you will be exposed to the high sun the reality of working these kingdom principles then it will down on you you know, sometimes you go for meetings and when a man of God is preaching, you see pastors crying, standing up. And you'll be wondering, why are they like this? Because they, they are closest to that reality. When they say bills, that is not captured in your mind. Because someone else is awake while you are sleeping. The time will come when you will be awake, where you should be awake. And that's when you will find out that someone can have a bed, but not have sleep. The situations in your life will wake you up. Say, are you joking? You want to sleep when we are here? Verse 1 to 5. Truly, my soul waited upon God. He said, from him cometh my salvation. Next verse to 5. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Ah, I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 3. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Talking to enemies now. Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. For they only consult to cast him down from his excellency. It says they delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. This is a picture of the tragedy of greatness that when people become great this is what happens to them men can say well done you are a man of god but in their heart they say we pray that one day you will have an accident to prove that this faith is nothing the bible says to bring him down from his excellency then he says my soul wait thou only upon god he said for my expectation is from him are you blessed tonight you must learn to wait on him for comfort instead of running around and harassing people listen every time situations overwhelm you keep quiet go to the secret place play a song like this or play worship i think media watch a worship team you people should do these kinds of things you just have 30 minutes of strong instrumentation like this for people to soak in because there are times you can't sing i wish i can tell you is every time you can dance dance where is the energy from I, there's a lady she may be in koinonia here they are burying her mother on um today's sunday i think on tuesday or wednesday this lady's mother died like 10 days ago she calls me almost 10 times every day crying and say apostle i believe my mother can come back to life that my mother said she will live long my mother was a god-fearing woman you know how difficult it is for a man of god especially when you walk in the anointing to respond to people like that and after praying and fasting when they came to carry the mother's body i think from shika or so to travel with her she kept crying and telling them that they, they should leave her her mother will come no i say small girl we know you are this that lady can get into prostitution immediately because of anger and say god failed me and then someone will run his big mouth and say something at that point what that lady needs is the secret place there is no amount of counseling you bring that will touch that lady are we together it's true what happens when a man of god and his wife is unable to have a child what happens when a man of god who is anointed gets married and then they find out he's impotent what happens when a man of god's family is in shambles he labors and gives birth to children he's pouring his heart to bless the world and all the children daughters getting pregnant sons are into drugs it's difficult for that man to stand and preach because he has to continue to be a preacher of righteousness but someone says don't bless us with this your faith thing if you know god why is it that your daughter why is it that your son has not been able to do anything brothers and sisters there are times that life can push you that even the strongest of us will need to lean to something other than you at that point find rest oh my soul find rest find rest in his presence it's true 
there are times that the leader send me text messages sir we need to make a decision now this is what we need to do this is what we have to do this is what we have to do sometimes uh, i think it was in the school of ministry or so um a few days or last week i was told that while lectures was going on someone's bike was stolen or so very funny incidents now when you hear such kinds of things as a man of god it can touch you have you learned to rest in god i have learned to draw strength in his presence we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you number four the secret place is a place of revival and restoration write it down the secret place is a place of revival and restoration psalm 23 from verse 2 and 3 please restoration of fire restoration of hunger restoration of love for god restoration of values restoration of your physical energy psalm 23 from verse 2 he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters verse 3 he restores my soul he restores my soul he restores my soul there are times you need restoration you need restoration of fire you need restoration of grace psalm 143 verse 11 psalm 143 verse 11 a place of revival quicken me O lord for thy name's sake for thy righteousness sake bring my soul out of trouble the prayers that great men pray quicken my soul lord revive me revive me my the situations in my life i can feel life going out of me physically revive me revive me oh god revive me i need a reviver lord the ministry burden is overwhelming me i can't pray again i can't fast again there is a conference coming and lord the finances is not there the energy is not there just when i want to prepare my son is causing trouble just when i want to love god one of the sons that i've so labored and raised is now disappointed revive me lord i feel life going out of me you need revival revive my fire lord i used to be a prayer warrior i used to pray for two hours three hours all of a sudden as soon as i graduated now it's three years after graduation lord i'm surprised no visions again no fire no nothing i'm surprised i misquote scriptures i cannot even Appa! no i used to wake up 2 a.m every day 12 o'clock every day now in two weeks I've not even called on your name revive me a secret place it's a place where men cry they come to him and say Lord revive me revive me Revelation chapter 2 4 to 5 Revelation chapter 2 this was the Lord speaking to the seven churches he said nevertheless I have somewhat against you what do I have against you he said because thou has left thy first love this is a word from the Lord to many of us here not thou has stopped loving me thou has left your first love I like many of us to just be sensitive to what the spirit is doing I already sense the anointing but there are many of us the way you started with God is not the way you are going now it's impossible for a whole day that you will not open your bible you will not read but right now you don't even know where the bible is that's the truth you love god you are born again but the fire has gone you may even be a preacher 
There's no week that you will not fast at least one day. But right now, six months, gluttony has eaten up your fire, quenched the fire on the coals. That the Lord would need to pick those tongues of fire again from the throne and touch your heart and touch your hand and touch your lips. Return to your first love. Return to your first love. Return to your first love. God is speaking to us. Return to your first fire. Return to your first appetite for spiritual things. You used to buy at least a book every month. Right now, it's more than two years. The only books you have are the ones that are left there. You are not interested again. You have all kinds of devotionals. You have all kinds of things. There are many believers that need to return to their first love. Is God speaking to us tonight? Return to your first love. And you return by going back to the secret place. Do you know sometimes what God does for me is that I can sit down like this quietly and he begins to play before me the visions of my yesterday, yesteryears. All of a sudden I see myself in the night when I used to pray. I see myself studying. I see those things and they bring a fresh energy fresh energy to me many of us have lost visions no vision you dream you sleep for eight hours you don't see anything tied to your destiny something is wrong yahweh yahweh hey, hey. help me sing yahweh yahweh number five the secret place is a place of illumination is where the secrets of destiny is revealed to men the secret place is where you find the secret of your destiny you will never find it in a book you may read it in a book but the secret place is where the blueprints the mysteries of your destiny are unveiled to you Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, 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 hey. Yahweh. place God gave me this formula that the string must always be played while I teach he said I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp I didn't get it from a book it was in the secret place many years ago he said your anointing is tied to the atmosphere of worship that every time the mystery is prayed the spirit of prophecy will come upon you the secret place many of you are in one position in destiny there is no, you don't know what else to do because the secret place is where the blueprint the strategy for your destiny is revealed listen that it worked for brother A does not mean it will work for you you must go to the secret place Lord what is my destiny about open this thing what is the key to my anointing I know I'm anointed but how do I open it why do I stand in a meeting and not see your power flow? Sometimes it happens. I'm not sure. I try to copy this man of God. I try to do this. What is the key? What is the key? What is the key? How do I know this anointing is in a place? How do I know what you want? Daniel chapter 2. We are reading from verse 14 to 22. 
Then we'll jump to verse 28. A king sleeps in the night and has a strange dream. And the king is angry. If no one can tell me the dream and the interpretation, I will kill everybody. And here comes Daniel. Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. People were about to die because there was no strategy. Next verse. 16. We are reading to 22. Then Daniel went in, listen, and desired of the king that he would give him what? Time. It's not that it cannot be found. Give me time. It looks like my life is not making progress. It's like there is no way out. I don't conclude on me yet. Give me. Somebody prophesy to someone say, give me time. It looks like I'm confused. I've been going around in circles and nothing is happening. Give me. It looks like God called me, but the anointing is not yet speaking. He said, give me time. Something is about to be revealed in the altar of fellowship that will bring fire on my life. I see it in dreams, but it doesn't happen in my meetings. I've seen prosperity, but what is the secret? He says that he would give him time and that he would show, guarantee, if you give me time, I will prove you wrong. You called me a failure, give me time. I will prove you wrong. You called me barren, give me time. I will prove you wrong. You called me a failure. My father called me a failure, give me time. I will prove you wrong. Listen, don't let no arrogant person look at your life today and conclude on you. Anytime anybody talks nonsense, don't argue, give me time. I said I was called into the ministry of wealth and abundance. And he said, with this 200 naira shoe, he said, don't worry, just give me time. Something will be shown me in the secret place. I will do business with God in the secret place that will shut people down. Let me tell you this. For those who have been here in this ministry for a long time, I said this thing many years ago. You see that? I said this thing many years ago. That's why the name started Eternity Network International. Right from when, from a, a cave somewhere with a bag. Because I saw it. I knew that a time will come. It will be a privilege for kings and presidents to hold your hand. Give me time. It doesn't look like it. Give me time. Between now and then, a mystery will be revealed. Brothers and sisters, when you see a man rising by a technology you don't understand, he used time to buy mysteries in the spirit. Time is currency. We can use it and do business with God and receive the mysteries of our destiny in exchange. 17. Then Daniel went to where? He went to his house. Just like everyone went to their own house and made the king the thing known to Ananiah and so on and so forth 18 that they would desire what mercies of the God of heaven you now see our mystery again concerning what is a secret wealth is a secret Lord why is this thing not working in our family it's a secret this anointing, as open as you see, there is more to it than what your eyes see. There are secrets. There are secrets to life. It's the one you carry that will help you command life. There are secrets to favor. It says, and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men in Babylon. 19. Hallelujah. 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 Then, the secret was revealed to Joshua Selman in a night vision. It says, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Listen, there are people here. What you are doing is true, you are called. But you will not get there the way you are approaching it. Your call is genuine, but there is no secret. Nothing has been given to you. God gave me the secret of not the general church growth, the church growth for koinonia. It's a secret. It's a secret. It's not charms that is bringing people. It's a secret. It's a mystery. We trade mysteries in the kingdom. You will look at it like this and not see where the equation adds up. But you ask the devil. Find out the devil that will stop people from coming. It's a mystery. 
whatever mystery brings you somewhere keeps you there it's a mystery then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision Daniel blessed the God of heaven we are reading to 22 then Daniel answered and said listen blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his and he changed the times and the seasons he removed kings and set it up kings he giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them who know understanding 22 he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what it is in darkness and the light dwelleth with him 28 verse 28 i thank thee and praise thee O god of my fathers who has given me wisdom and might and has made known to me now what we desired of thee for thou hast now made unto us the king's matter a matter that does not concern you but by the mystery of the secret place god gives you something great men are fathers of faith in this nation they will tell you they found secrets when they started people said don't mind them it's five years now they are going as if the devil doesn't exist I've passed redemption camp a number of times and I am amazed at how people leave Lagos around and come to this forest. I've been to Canaan land altar. I've been to almost, almost all the prayer grounds from MFM to, to living faith to, to redeemed to four square. It's amazing. Almost all of them can be holding programs concurrently simultaneously and it's all packed full to the outside same mysteries listen when you hold the mysteries of the kingdom i pity whoever just thinks you are joking it's not pride you will play life like a chess but there is a god in heaven that revealed what please i want to comfort you concerning your business concerning your career there is a god oh, in heaven and the bible says he has the ability to reveal secrets my life is full of this kind of experiences where god comes to me and says this is it i give you a blueprint i give you a secret and make known unto the king nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and the visions of thy head are these and he began to tell him revelation let's take one last verse and we're done for today Jesus Psalm 25 verse 4 to 5 Psalm 25 verse 4 to 5 and then we'll pray very touching scripture let's read it one to read four to five it says show me thy ways O Lord teach me thy paths next verse lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the god of my salvation because i'm aware you can do this what do i do on thee do i wait how long say retreat all day not part of the day all day because i want you to teach me something I want you to guide me so I wait all day, not half day. There are retreats that are half day, two hours. A proper full retreat is a complete day. From the rising of the sun to the going down, you are in his presence. Lord, I stay. I know you will come. Six hours he has not come. You are still worshiping, sitting like a madman. Eight hours you've not had anything. It's just general scriptures of comfort. I will lead you where you will go. You just be patient. Nine hours is still there. And all of a sudden, late into the night, you are sitting like a madman and say, what am I doing here? Then he comes in his majesty. When he comes, you know he's there. All of a sudden, the climate changes. His majesty is coming to your room. He says, what have you been asking me about? This is for your destiny. Come, let me show you. And he takes you in the spirit of the Lord. Opens a Bible you have been reading every day. But this time, he's the one who opens it. This is your destiny. This is it. This is what to do about your finances. When you do this, they will attack you here. Do this one. Do this. These are the keys. Go. And he leaves. You get up from that vision and say, where are the devils? They come like before, but you rise by a mystery. 
and they say what lifted you the secrets of the lord we don't do business in this kingdom by bold face you will die like a chicken the mysteries of the kingdom listen there's there's a woman now is i'm just waiting i i trust that they would finish i think i sent you the text a miracle happened just between yesterday and today a doctor i, I don't know if it's shika here he was trained in abu someone died this morning um now we don't talk a lot about all these kinds of things they were in the surgical room with the lady operating for what i don't know and then i don't know what happened and the person just died like that he was trained in abu here but i think it's another hospital and they were all confused because the lady said according to the doctor he said they i sent you the text and a number of people here that they begged the lady said please make sure i come alive and the lady just died like that just died and the doctor sent me a text i think it was around maybe afternoon and said this is the situation and the family members are sitting somewhere just waiting for the report and he said honestly apostle you have to help us this is a difficult situation this girl has died they check after a long time i said are you a doctor i replied him back are you a doctor he said yes i'm certified i'm not he said he was doing the surgery with um, some other senior colleagues i said Tor, what do you want now he said apostle we can't tell this family this lady has died and i said okay the anointing of the spirit just came upon me in a very strange way and then i sent a text it's still in my phone i sent a text i said in the name of jesus i called back your life i said they should take the phone and place it on the person and then the doctor foolishly just did it like that help her please immediately he placed that phone after a few minutes all of a sudden from the gates of death this girl just jumped back the text is still in my phone Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, 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 hey. Yahweh. Up here for tonight listen what you call greatness in life is a function of these realities accessed by the power of the secret place if the devil robs you from the reality of the secret place he has used one blow to destroy many aspects of your life There are many of us right now we are we are at a crossroad listen when you go to the secret place you don't come out till you come out with answers many of us go to the secret place. we are not desperate enough god does not visit casual people diligently seek him that you go back with answers and sit there and say lord do you know i read the story of buddha buddha was a young indian who was confused about life and why some things could not answer it doesn't mean i believe in him that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying buddha got angry carried notebooks and went to the secret place and said he's not coming out again until whoever is the deity of the universe explained to him the mystery of life he went there and whoever he met there and had an encounter changed his name to buddha he left there as an ordinary person he came out as buddha this is in the negative there is a way you can enter the secret place as a failure and say lord it is me and you all. i don't know what you are going to do but lord my recharge card and your god is in this room i'm not going out for your information i brought one gallon of yogurt and one gallon of juice and one bag of pure water my bathroom is there i'm not going out there must be an answer to my finances 
get relevant notebooks you will stay for it let me give you a side effect you will stay for a long time and not hear anything but if you have the guts to insist when he tests your resolve and see that you mean it like jacob he will come he will come he will come ask occultists the freemasons one of the things they do when they are initiating people and all of that is to hit your forehead with an object that is very painful that you can faint test your resolve do you want it that bad and they test your resolve when you are taking a student to NDA sometimes from the gate as you the mother just lets the student enter from the gate someone can just kick him and say oh yeah frog jump you are watching your child doing frog jump and say mommy i want to go back and then they say don't mind him and after five years that that weak chicken like guy can go to a fuel station and harass a thief and say sit down first they don't talk i say i will beat you here you see my belt i'm a military man something happened to him sometimes we pity ourselves too much to get the answers we are looking for we are not desperate enough to stay we want cheap power cheap prosperity cheap lifting cheap influence no it doesn't work that way there is a price are you ready to pray lord grace to pay the price lift your voice and begin to pray hey. There is a prize for the anointing. There is a prize for revelation. There is a prize for direction. There is a prize for greatness. The prize is the secret place. The staying power. There is a prize for a flourishing ministry. There is a prize for a thriving business. Nekata barakato shana maliga da baria da ba. Shega da barakato. Pray, Lord, I receive grace. Whatever it would take, in the name of Jesus, grace to stay. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. He that dwells in the secret place the secret place not the public place you are beautiful in all your When I find that way, it can bring glory to my life. You are beautiful in all your ways. You Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I kill every distraction in my life. Everything that can distract me from the secret place. Everything that can destroy my pace I receive grace come on pray hallelujah prayer point number two lord from heaven let a fresh desire for your presence is not something you will do mechanically lord a desire a desire greater than my necessary food a desire for your presence more than a desire for trip for preaching more than a desire to succeed plant it in my heart and let it grow 
Sana malanda sana malakato. That you become my desire. Sabaka po sabara da ba shela manadara. Lekete prekete leko sodo balada 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 ba. Hallelujah. Father, open up the secrets of my destiny. There is something my eyes need to see so that my generation can see me. Open up, oh God. Let the book be open. Lift your voice and pray. Pray this prayer point with all your heart. What is the secret to your anointing upon my life? What is the secret to the spirit of revelation upon my ministry? What is the secret that you are giving me for wealth and abundance what is the secret for influence what is the secret for favor let the secrets of the kingdom be unveiled to me Hallelujah. Our time is gone. But we are still going to pray this secret prayer. Listen, we are still going to pray it again. I had Bishop Oyedeko say this many times. That people reign in life. Not based on the secrets available. On the one God has shown them. The Lord told me something, I think it was two years ago. You know, we always teach that. The word of the Lord is powerful. Yes. But not every word of God blesses you. It is the one sent to you. Yes, sent. There were many widows in Zarephath. But a prophet was sent to one. If Elijah met another widow, it would be disobedience. Although he would give her breakthrough. Sent. Sent. The word for prosperity can come for everybody. But you must say, send me mine. Send me mine. It's a formula that will be added to you. That will work for only you. Let me tell you. There is an equation in every man's success equation that was customized for him. You first start with the general understanding. It's like occult. You will be rising with it, but you get to a level where God says, no, the principles have taken you. Let me now show you your own. It's true. It works for finances. It works for ministry. I was preaching somewhere and a man of God told me something. He said, he said Pastor, um, we spend so much money on publicity is it alright if we stop because I hear you don't use I said don't stop oh. the general principle is that the word must be published but how it will be published is a secret God gave me I'm not saying posters are bad that's not what I'm saying but I'm just saying it was you copy it you will run your church down sir don't do it there are things God can tell you God can tell you every time enemies rise against you fast for one day and that's all it's a secret to you it may look like a stupid secret but you will stand and see your landlord vowing that if by tomorrow Kai, oh, you see eh, brothers and sisters when you hold these things your life almost becomes magical it's true look at Jesus he had a secret they took him to a cliff all that was left is to push him and he walked through them hi there were times he parted the water but for jesus he walked on it if you were waiting for the water to part in jesus time that strategy was not it was of god but not relevant for that occasion he walked on the water and he told peter now we don't just part the water we walk on it there was something about the body of knowledge revealed to the people then that could only allow God 
give them miracles by passing through water but now he said you can walk on it an angel appeared to me and he told me that there shall be no loss an angel why are you confident like this Paul an angel appeared to me already it's not because I'm not human I've seen something and they were taken safely to an island called Melita there is something you see people can be ranting up and down oh don't worry my <sighs> that's why sometimes when people send me text messages apostle I saw an attack on your life they may be right but sometimes I just laugh it over boy this man standing before you is surrounded by mysteries like chariots there is what you must do the moment they tell you oh somebody is about to attack your life and destiny do you know what to do is there a formula God gave you that you get up and say Lord this is it and you manipulate life from the secret place and come out to your shock thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and makes through our life the savour of the knowledge of the glory of God what you know in life listen matters we're rounding up in this kingdom who doesn't like you is no problem but who likes you matters who doesn't like you is not a problem but who likes you matters there are many people who are praying that God should clear them out of the way they can be cleared they are standing there by a covenant that even God respects they have become gates to a system the way you pass through is to tell God to touch their heart to like you praying that they get up is a foolish thing are we together you may have a vice chancellor or a head of department or a dean he may not be very born again but that man sows a seed to a dangerous man of God who has already spoken and said no one will fight you so you will fight that man and the word on him will fight you back and you are wondering why is this guy so unbelieving yet immune because a word is over him and if God gives you intelligence he says look this man on his own can die in one day from your prayer but he was wise enough to find an anointing that shields him because of that what you need to pray is favor and he said Lord grant me favor and the man says I don't know why I just like you come there are people you don't cast away you pray that God will touch their heart for your sake not everything is castable you couldn't cast Caesar away you could just pray that God will make a man touch him to release the body of Jesus are we blessed every Sunday every Wednesday Tuesday or every other day especially in Africa we have people moving from their homes to Christian religious places of worship and on average most believers will tell you I am going to church is that true where are you they say I am in church and the word church has been seldom understood by many believers and um, we've had preachers here and there try to bring illumination to the subject of the house of God and the church it is my responsibility under God and my joy to enlighten us according to scripture to understand in addition to the truths that we have learned and we continue to learn to understand what exactly is the church the goal for this teaching is to bring us to superior spiritual knowledge as to the implication of being in and being part of the house of God are we blessed Genesis 28 let's start from there for a reference Genesis 28 blessed be the name of the Lord let's begin our reading from verse 10 this is a scripture about Jacob and his encounter with the God of heaven the first encounter he had two principal encounters the first was in 28 chapter 28 the second was in chapter 22 haven't been in Levan's house for over 20 years now the Bible says Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran uh-huh 
And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. The Bible says, and he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. Now, I don't know how he slept on stones. And lay down in that place to sleep. And the Bible says, he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Follow the dream carefully, 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac. At this point, there was no God of Jacob. The land whereon thou liest, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed. Uh -huh. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Next verse. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to you of. This is a good place for someone to say amen. That God is saying, I will not leave you until I do to you everything I said I would do. 16. Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Right? So we see lack of discernment here. 17. He was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place here was his conclusion this is none other but the house of god and this is the gate of heaven in other words this kind of experience based on what my father taught me if such an experience should happen where you have the innumerable company of angels is that true where you have god himself speaking to edify to reveal his promises to show you his ways and to assure you of his presence he says this is none other there is no other environment that can capture this kind of encounter except the house of god hallelujah this is very powerful next scripture Matthew chapter 16, the first biblical mention of the word church, from verse 13, Matthew 16 and verse 13. Jesus was with the disciples and the Bible says he came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi and he asked the disciples. So, the revelation of the church according to Jesus began with a question. What is the question? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? His identity as the Son of Man. And they said, Some say that thou art John, the Baptist. Some say Elias, Elijah now. Some say Jeremiah. Some say you are one of the prophets. And then 15, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? That means these people are giving their propositions because they are far. They are not close. They have not had the privilege of proximity. Now that you have been with me, we've eaten together, we've gone for crusades together, what is your conclusion about me? And Jesus Christ was amazed that none of them could speak. All of those multitudes, the 72, the 12, now they stood and they were completely in limbo, not knowing what to say in response to that question. 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Now he makes a very strong statement, and I say unto you, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Please keep that scripture there. It says you are Peter. And upon this rock. Now I'm not here to bring up theological debates. Many people have said the rock is Peter. Many people have said the rock. No, 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 no. It's very clear from scripture. It says you are Peter. And upon this rock. What rock? Upon this revelation. Upon this understanding you have had that I am Christ, the Son of the living God. Are we together now? Yes. Upon this revelation I will build my church. And if allowed to be built by me, it will be so formidable that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Are we still together? So Jesus here is speaking about the church. He made mention of the fact that more than just dying for the sins of the world, that he came to inaugurate an institution. He came to inaugurate a phenomenon, if I would call it, called the church. And he said that this entity will be so formidable. Listen carefully. It will be the entity that sustains the power to triumph and prevail over the gates of hell. The idea of church did not start with the founders of ministries. The idea of church did not start with some of our patriarchs alive and dead. The idea of church was not just a government initiative to have an institution that supports activities um, that relate to faith and spirituality. No. The idea of church was God's own invention. It was a product of God's own intelligence. Listen very carefully. Because many believers view church as several things. For others, they believe that church represents a building that has some level of excellence connected to it where believers come together and then they have the opportunity to worship God. Others believe that church refers to individuals. Others believe that church refers to any platform that carries a semblance of spirituality or any platform that seems to have loyalty to the tenets of the Christian faith. So my question tonight very briefly is what is the church? I'm going to be giving you three dimensions of the church in our discussion tonight. What exactly is the church? Because if you do not know what the church is, you will embrace any definition that the devil gives you about the church. The reason why many people do not respect the church is because they do not even understand what it is. It is a very mysterious entity that the government cannot define. It is a mysterious entity that academicians cannot define. It was not a product of a research from an institution. The church came from the mind of the fountain of wisdom himself. So join with me as we explore three definitions which represent three dimensions to our understanding of the church number one the first revelation of the church according to scripture is found in jeremiah chapter 51 from verse 20 please give it to us jeremiah chapter 51 from verse 20 it says thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war for with thee I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. Uh huh. It says, and with thee I will break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider, and with thee I will break in pieces man and woman. With thee I will break in pieces old and young. With thee I will break in pieces young man and the maid. Last verse. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee I will break in pieces the husband man and his yoke of oxen. With thee I will break in pieces captains and ruler. Is there any class of society that was missing here? None. You are my battle axe. 
I am using you. So the first definition of the church, write it down please, that the church is a spiritual strategy. More than a people, the first revelation of the church that I want you to have is the church as a spiritual strategy. An invention from God's intelligence. A spiritual strategy, listen to me, mandated to be used by God as the only tool that is able to purge, to cleanse, to build, and to reveal Christ and His purposes in its fullness. This is the church. The church is a strategy. For instance, if, um, if I have a flat tire or I have a, pro a problem with my car and I'm unable to move it, I can hire another car that will help to drag it to a place where it will be fixed. And a strategy is usually invented where I can connect, is that true? And connect with a moving car that is alive, a towing van, and then connect to the vehicle. And the towing van pushes it. That, that is a strategy to remedy for something. The fact that the church came into being is already proof that there was something that was not correct. Are we together now? So the church has come as a spiritual strategy to remedy a condition, to remedy a situation. There are names that were called in scripture. One of it is light. Another is salt. Jesus Christ himself called us light and salt. That immediately suggests that for us to be called light means there is darkness. For us to be called salt means there is a level of tastelessness somewhere and lack of preservation. So the church is a spiritual strategy. The church in fact is the only spiritual strategy that sustains the ability to reveal Christ in his fullness and to bring him glory. Please write it down. The only spiritual strategy that has the capacity to reveal Christ, to subdue principalities and powers. Oh, this is powerful. Thou art my battle axe. That means wherever there is darkness, wherever there is confusion, listen carefully, wherever there is lack of growth and enlightenment, wherever the purposes of God have not been made institutional within any territory, it is a reflection that the church may not be there or the church may not be shining as light. The church is a strategy. So do not ask why you are put in the midst of darkness. You are a strategy. God's strategy. Are we together? For every car that you buy, usually you would have a few tools in that car. Is that true? Most people would have a toolbox containing screwdrivers and, 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 um, you know, and um, spanners and all of those things. You would have an extra tire somewhere in the car and you would have a jack you know, to help you if you have a flat tire. All of those things are tools and they are strategies to make sure that for no reason do you stop moving forward if you need to. So when you have a flat tire, what do you do? You go to the back of that car and open up the toolbox and you begin to effectively use the tools that will help maybe replacement. There are times that you can bring out an extra tire that helps to move the car. There are times that you can bring out all kinds of tools. That is how you are. That means whenever there is darkness, God pulls out from his toolbox and brings someone out. The church is a spiritual strategy. Wow. I am not just a man of God. I am a strategy. Do you know what that means? I am a strategy, a tool to be able to achieve something very divine, achieve something very exact as far as the revelation of the Christ is concerned. That immediately cures you from this sense of complex and inferiority. You did not just happen across the surface of the earth. 
you were a strategy. A strategy takes time to bring forth. Many of you are mathematicians. If you are, you are trying to solve a problem, you sit down, you think, scientists will come up with all kinds of hypotheses and go through all kinds of verification systems until it becomes a theory. You are the final decision of the intelligence of God. Did you hear what I said? Your, your arrival, the church as a strategy, means you are the final decision of a conclusion. The parliament of heaven sat down and thought of how the purposes of God will remain. And you were the conclusion of that meeting. The church is a spiritual strategy. The only strategy that sustains the ability to make kingdom come a reality. Is God speaking to anyone? Hmm. So, when you know this, you do not begin to frown at the church every time you see the church involved in issues that represent darkness. If it is true that the church is a strategy, it means that strategy should find expression in politics, in government, in business. Am I right? He said, I will break in pieces. And he began to list different people. Men were captured in that experience. Women, maids, rulers, princes, captains, everyone. So, the cure for the political decadence in Africa generally is the church. The cure for the economic problems of men. This is the reason why when you say the church has no business in empowering men, you are already, it is, it is um, what do we call it now? You are insulting the very definition of the church. Wherever there is darkness is exactly where we are invited. Is someone learning now? Yeah. Can I tell you the truth? If everybody becomes a preacher called into the fivefold ministry, the church will die. Because that was not, the Bible says some, he gave some. So the proposition that everybody should become a man of God like to preach as the way to bring kingdom come is a very sincere but inaccurate understanding. The pulpit is the platform that shapes the understanding of the people like I'm doing. But the real place of assignment is not the pulpit. The real place of assignment is wherever there is darkness. Help me list a few places that you know in our world today where there is darkness. In one word or two words, everywhere. Am I right on that? Someone say everywhere. Does that include the government? Does that include schools? Does that include our banking system? Everywhere. So how relevant is the church? Are you sure the church should be relevant in activities of finances? Are you sure the church should be relevant in politics and governance? Are you sure the church should be relevant in handling demons and principalities and powers? No other strategy sustains the power to do that. Listen, can I be honest with you? Based on scripture and based on history, almost, and I'm, I'm saying this as an opinion, which is grounded on scripture, almost every other religion and institution that I know do not have the power to cast out demons. What happens is called occultic pacifism. Pacifism is an act of appeasal. It was an ancient ritual that was used to appease demons. That means when a spirit comes and is troubling an individual through some um, activity of necromancy and all of that, you conjure the spirit to ask you what it wants. And the spirit can say, I am hungry. You are eating and I have not eaten. And you ask, what do you want? He said, bring one goat. You see it happen in our cultures. Bring one goat. Bring one chicken. Make sure it's black. And so based on what the spirit is asking for, you politely and laboriously go and look for what it's looking for. And then it will seem to pacify itself. You will see that the individual will have a semblance of healing. Then you continue making progress and the spirit will come again. In ancient times, Old Testament particularly, when they found people who were demonized, they were usually stoned to death. Because since they did not have the ability, except for a few people who were involved in casting out demons, 
and the art of deliverance or or casting out demons was not something that was really understood you see from scripture so when jesus showed up as a model of the church and there were demonic people instead of killing the people he could neatly with surgical precision separate the influence from the individual and when they saw this they said no you are using beelzebub the prince of demons you have found a way of rising in the realm of the spirit to negotiate your way with this prince of demons. You are just manipulating us. And Jesus said, no. If I cast it by Beelzebub, by who do your own fathers? Because many of them entered into covenants and fraternity with demon spirits. Now look up please, listen. Most of the African cultures today have people who are mediums. Is that true? Their assignment is to be um, the mediators between the spirit entities that control those territories. We have all kinds of names, but they are all the same. So, when a land seems to be barren, listen carefully, when a land seems to not produce optimally, or when there is war and people are dying, or there's a plague or pandemic of some sort, usually, these individuals who can be priests or mediums or whatever they are, they are mandated to go through divination and all kinds of satanic operation to now ask those spirits what is wrong. Is that true? And to do that, they have to use divination and conjure these spirits. Should I teach this now? But listen, listen. The only way you move spirits from one safe location according to them to another safe location is to simulate the habitation of that spirit. Let me give you an instance. Now, we will never glorify the devil in the name of Jesus. But say I were not a believer and say I'm some idol worshiper in the village somewhere. If I want to call a spirit from wherever it is, to a festival that is happening do you know what i need to do my first assignment is to study the habitat of that spirit spiritually and then through these sacrifices i simulate the same environment of that spirit it can now live wherever it is and come right there and still feel at home this is the reason why based on that same principle god is comfortable to be in heaven and yet live in your heart because your heart is a simulation of the throne so he can stay comfortable in your heart the holy ghost has never complained living in you are we together now yes what happens is when you go through that process of salvation something really happens to your heart it is heaven manifesting in your heart now on legal basis the holy spirit can reside within your heart and find the same comforts that he had when he was on jesus powerful mystery listen to me most of the problems in our world today are spiritual in origin did you know that and then do you believe that please believe please in the name of jesus and in the name of wisdom believe early that most of the problems that a man will face in his lifetime personally and institutionally are largely spiritual in origin now when they manifest physically they will have political expressions they will have economic expressions are we together they will have sociological expressions medical expressions intellectual expressions but largely the same way all things came from the realm of the spirit all troubles come from the realm of the spirit for further study i make reference to the book of job and you will learn there that nothing just happens in this realm the book of job we've studied it a bit at least chapter one here job was a sincere man who was going about his business the bible says he feared the lord and eschewed evil and then he would offer sacrifices in advance for his children then the bible says one day something happened in the heavens is that true satan was in their midst and god made a boast of job according to scripture have you considered my servant job and then the devil told the lord he said does he serve you for nothing 
give me the permission to touch him and you will see paraphrasing if he will not curse you to your face and he said okay go i give you permission to touch every other thing but preserve his life sin two there was a certain he kept sending the word that i will die but after three days i will resurrect can i tell you if jesus christ did not send the word those gates will not open because now being dead he did not have a body and according to the law of territory once you exit this realm it will take someone with a body to call you from that realm you cannot enter without a body i know that the gate said who is this king of glory but let me ask you a question who said lift up your heads The same way you can be sleeping and a scripture is saying, touch not my anointed. <laughs> See, if you don't understand this, you will not understand the ministry of prayer investments. That you can send the word of God into 2023. You can send it into 2024. It is only you that celebrates New Year. The word of God does not celebrate New Year. There is no such thing as New Year. The realm of the spirit is, is a continual Someone in one minute, can you send words? Send words in one minute. I am the head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus, above only and not beneath. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Gentiles, come to my light. Kings, to the brightness of my rising. The favor of the Lord is upon my life. I decree and declare. No weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, it will fall in judgment. Don't be silent. I decree and declare, a thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. That when men say there is a casting down, I decree and declare that there is a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, my path is as a shining light that shines ever brighter, even unto the perfect day. I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. I am above only, above thrones, dominions, seated with Christ. In the name of Jesus, blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening. Blessed in the afternoon, blessed in the city, favored by the Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. Listen, please hear me, believers. You are being trained to know how to be victorious. This is what you are receiving. A strategy hear me not a it is not a degradation there are people who are who are beautiful pastors they are shepherds they may not even be very effective teachers but they are homely they can bring everything together when you find yourself operating in an area how many of you have held a bunch of keys and they are all keys, but you use the wrong key for a door. Sometimes it can even enter the hole and not be able to turn. It looks exactly like the real key, except that it is not. I submit to you, therefore, that you must obtain grace from God to really know what area have I been assigned to. Some of you are intercessors, like Anna the prophetess. Like Simeon the prophet, find rest in that noble ministry and see it as noble as preaching before a crowd on a crusade ground. There are some of you who are kingdom financiers. You may never have the opportunity to minister as we are doing, but God has anointed you to be the strategy that ensures that the work of the kingdom never fails. Don't fail in that assignment. 
There are many kingdom financiers who left the work of kingdom financing to go to the pulpit simply because there seems to be some psychological attachment to being on the pulpit, especially when you are leading and heading the ministry. Psychologically speaking, you are generally considered. If I ask you to arrange people in the kingdom according to nobility of call, Chances are that you will place people like us in front simply because of the supposed charismatism around our call. But you may be wrong. It will take God to arrange people according. Do you know, the more God hides you, the more you are nobler. Look at it in the building of the human body. There are parts that you cannot see. Imagine if your heart was on your head. You would die when an angry person comes near you. He will hold that heart and squeeze it till you die. So God kept it and covered it with bones. Now you ignore the heart simply because it's not the hands and the fingers you are seeing. When your heart fails, let every other thing be alive. You will still die. Correct? So, I'm teaching you as kingdom people. That the more you are exposed, doesn't mean you are not noble. Every call is a high calling. But let me tell you, when God intentionally hides you and makes you to play a background role, just know that he's protecting you jealously. It is a sign that you are truly noble. Some of the people who pray for me as a ministry, you may never see them. They may never come on this pulpit. I met with a group of women... Um, a few weeks ago, while I traveled to a particular region, and I was told that these women, very, about seven or so of them, very, very, you know, um, marvelously helped by God, accomplished women. And they said, Apostle, God gave us a mandate to pray for you. We are your intercessors by God. When I saw them, I was so broken. I said, How, what do I do to these people to let them know that I love and appreciate them? Now, when you see Joshua Selman doing well and doing exploits, you think he's just a product of his personal prayer life. Until the day we stand before Jesus, you will see how many people's prayer provided the leverage for us to rise to this level. And anybody, listen, let me teach you. The moment you are in a position of visibility, be wise enough to know that the invisible is what bets the visible. Are we together? Because our world is sensual and carnally minded. Chances are that you who is the one in the elevated position that is seen by everyone. Usually, if someone wants to sow a seed now, chances are that he will not give you the seed as my intercessor. It's me who will bring the seed to because he believes I am the one blessing him. But let me tell you, when God's reward system begins to spread around, he will pick you and honor you with the same gravity that is honoring the preacher. There are people because of their efficiency as God's strategy, praying for men of God, for instance, praying for nations, you will find out that God will covenant with them that their whole family must have leaders. They may not be very educated, but you will never lack leaders in those families. It is God's covenant and His reward system. I hope that one time we'll have the opportunity to, to look at the subject of prophetic intercession. And I'm going to be teaching you the benefits and the blessings that follow an intercessor. But for now, it's sufficient for you to know that you are God's battle axe. Next time someone looks at you and says you are useless, a non-entity, either because some physical results that they expect to be there is not there. Maybe like money, a car, a house, or some, some earthly parameters of defining success. Find solace in the fact that you are a strategy. Every key remains dormant until it gets to the door it was assigned to open. You can hold a key for a long time and think that key is useless. If that is the key that opens the restroom, when you are pressed, you will know how efficient that key is. If that is the key to the kitchen, when you are hungry, you will know how efficient that key is. So that God may not seem to be doing so much physically with you, it does not mean you are not part of that army. It does not mean, it's just that we have not gotten to the page of the story where your relevance is needed. Keep building yourself. Keep waiting, knowing that you are a strategy. 
Mary, you are a strategy. But if the angel has not announced the coming of Jesus, it will look like you are just an ordinary woman. Be patient. Elizabeth, if, if John the Baptist is not yet uh, ready to come, it will look like you are just some barren woman who married a prophet. I am God's strategy. Number two, what is the church? Is God speaking to someone? The church refers to the men and the women. So first the church is a strategy. And then the second, the church refers to the men and women. The human vessels. The human vessels. That are number one, the host of heaven on earth. And then number two, the executors of God's purposes. I will take it again. The church refers to men and women that are number one, the host, H-O-S-T-S. We are the ones who host God. God will not go and dwell in some mountain somewhere. He dwells in believers. So the church refers to these human vessels that have sustained the ability to hold this treasure, heaven, in us. And then the church also refers to the men and the women who are the executors of God's purposes. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Let's hurry up. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, ye also, as lively stones, are built, into, are built up into a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He calls us lively stones. He says we are a spiritual house. Though human, we are that temple that God resides. He resides in me. He lives in me. The reason why you feel the presence of God on earth, the reason why you see Him manifest on earth, is because there are human vessels that have accepted to be hosts for Him. And number two, there are human vessels that have accepted to be the executors of His purposes. Can I tell you this? Plans and purposes are vain until you find not only a strategy, you find the human vessels that are willing to execute it. i give you an instance. If you come up with a beautiful plan, even a beautiful strategy, say for building a structure like this, you will need someone who will carry that plan and translate it from what is written on paper to this material expression. The church, in addition to being a strategy, we are the executors of the will and the purposes of God. That means every time God wants to execute His will and His purposes, we are the ones He sends. Are we together? Romans chapter 12, please. Give us Romans chapter 12 and we'll start our reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 12 and verse 4. It says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Uh -huh. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. The church does not just refer to a strategy alone. The church also refer to a people. A people. The people. God's chosen people. The ones who become the principal executors of His will and His plan. Let me tell you what that means. That everything God decides to do is executed on earth through the church. Here's how Jesus put it in His prayer. He says, when you pray, ask the Father that it be done in earth as it is in heaven. The earth there is not just talking about the physical land. The first earth is you. Let it be done in my life and then through my life as it is in heaven. That means when there are no human vessels, look up please, 
Did you know that every time there are no human vessels, even when there is a strategy for God's program, God's program becomes limited until he finds a man. Read your Bible and see how many times God's programs were delayed because there were no sufficient human vessels that were worked upon and trained to be the executors of his will. It took Moses a long time. God had a strategy to save his people from Egypt and to take them to a land flowing with milk and honey. But he needed a man and then from that man he would mobilize a people. Same thing happened to Gideon when they had come under the yoke of the Midianites. God found a man, Gideon, and from that man he mobilized 32,000 people and they were reduced to 300. And Gideon, alongside 300 men, brought victory for the nation of Israel. Can I tell you this? The church refer to men, not chairs. Chairs without men is not the church. A good sermon without the men to listen to it does not make the church. The church refer to the men and the women. Based on this definition, you see that this whole idea... Now, I say this respectfully, but this whole idea of refusing people from coming to the house of God to hear the word of God uh, simply because uh, sometimes it's misunderstood to be just a passion to have crowd. No, no. The church refers to men and women. And if those men and women are not there to hear, to be changed, it means that the purposes of God will suffer because there would not be sufficient people to be executors of the same. Are we together? In gathering is your, your, your kingdom responsibility. To bring in more men to the fold. So that they be trained. So that they be equipped and then they can be used by God. Without men, there is no church. Assume with me, for instance, that I come in here and there is absolutely nobody. Now I'm preaching and I'm talking. All I'm doing is just rehearsals or talking with the Holy Spirit. But as far as church is concerned, church happens when there is God and when there are men. It took God and Jacob to be called the house of of God. Even heaven is not called the house of God. It took God and a man on earth. And Jacob said, surely this is the house of God, even though the gate of heaven. Can I tell you this? If you are a preacher here, or you are a worker in church, you have a kingdom responsibility to see that in gathering never ceases with you. You have a kingdom responsibility. Not through force and manipulation. But through revelation. That it is noble every time you bring people to the house of God. You give them an opportunity to experience the ministry of transformation. Of building. Of training. The more God finds men. The more his purposes can advance. Do you believe that? Yes sir. The more genuine believers we have within our territory, the more the purposes of God can find expression. When there are few men who call upon the name of the Lord, when there are few men who sustain spiritual intelligence, it's going to be difficult to advance the purposes of God. So we have to continue to pray that in as much as God has blessed us as a ministry and as a global family, there are still many people who need to be part of this fold. And we must continue to trust God that through the signs and wonders, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and through the responsibility of ingathering, God is going to grant grace that His house be filled with men. Not just men who endorse the call of a man of God, but men who can be trained, can be equipped, and can be efficient. Man of God, if that is your motivation for ingathering, fire on. But if the motivation becomes a mundane pursuit just to bring some accreditation and add to the list of those who are making things happen, it is not a pure motivation. 
my motivation as a man of God has always and will ever remain to see that God brings as many people who need to be trained, who need to be equipped and to be released to become um, this vast army that God will use for kingdom come. And this we will not fail to do in the name of Jesus Christ. So every time you say the church, you are referring to a spiritual strategy. The strategy that brings dominion over principalities and powers and sees to it that Jesus Christ is enthroned. When you say the church, it also refers to men. Without men, there is no church. I repeat, without men, there is no church. That means the extended meaning of this is that every time God sends men to church, we must obtain the grace to treat those men with honor knowing that without men there is no church now it is not a license to come and trouble people in church and people just transfer the pain they've had from office and the pain they've had from other things and just punish the church to men every time god sends those men you are grateful and you serve them the meal of god's word principally and then make sure that within the time that they are under your influence they feel the love, the warmth, the peace, the fellowship that befits those who are called by the name of the Lord. Herein lies my reservation about ignoring the relevance of men as far as making a church happen. Now, you know, people are subject to their whatever it is that they have. Uh, to stay as far as kingdom come is concerned. But I will never be the man of God who will come here and downplay your relevance and downplay the fact that you are here. The reason why I am effective doing what I am doing is because you are here. Can I tell you the truth? No matter how sound your call is, if God does not send the men to come and listen and be trained and submit to that teaching, you are not effective. For God so loved the world. When Jesus came, his entire attention was on men. Even when he resurrected, he went back to men to train those men to keep helping men. The church refers to men. Invest in excellence. Invest in media. Invest in quality sound but not to the detriment of the men. That means if the church refers to men, the highest attention should not be can believe. The word session, it comes as a system of building and edification for the men. Everything is about men. Man of God, when ministry becomes all about you, there is something wrong. When ministry becomes all about Joshua Selman, the Alpha and the Omega of the activities that happen there, you may be well-meaning, but something is wrong. True ministry is not about the man that God uses. There is a place for the honor that priesthood demands. But I'm telling you, the real assignment of a minister is to build men. If you hate those men, you can never truly build the people you hate. You can never... Let me give you an advice. Again, if you're a man of God or you are involved around ministry, never be exalted too high that you lose touch with the men you are sent to because you will be aborting and even destroying your assignment. The reason why you are called is for the men. Without men, there is no church. We must sustain compassion. We must sustain the, the stamina to deal with men and to do so well. As many of you know, I've had quite a, a, a very serious schedule right from Wednesday. I've been traveling over four states or so, and then this morning, and then right here. And sometimes people say, Apostle, you're stretching yourself too much and all of that. But when I remember that the church is not a building, when I remember Jesus died for, the men that he so loved and loves, the men that he will use to birth his purposes, the men that become the principal conduit for kingdom come, I am motivated afresh to bend over backwards to see that those men are trained. I believe in excitement. I believe in joy. I believe in fun. I believe in gladness. 
of heart. But can I tell you, we must trust God to restore the discipline of discipleship. To make sure that every time we gather, we do not waste the time of God's people. Are we together? By the grace of God, God will grant us grace that every time you come here, everything that makes up the program is intended to be a blessing to you. Men. It is all about men. In as much as it is all about Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world. That was his motivation. The church is a spiritual strategy. The church refers to men and women the vessels that he will use to birth his purposes number three and this is the last point for tonight the church also refers to an institution the only institution that is mandated to teach and mentor and build people in the ways of god the church is an institution write it down please First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. The church also refers to an institution. Not a spiritual institution. A physical institution. First Timothy chapter 3. The B part says, To behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. The Bible calls it the pillar and the ground of truth. That means whenever you are looking for, there is a place in Abuja they call fish market. That means when you are looking for fish, where do you go to? You don't run to a bank. You don't run to a bank and meet the cashier and say, can I have tilapia? Or can I have a shark? Or can I have all of this? They will take you straight from there to the hospital. Is that true? Yeah. That means every time you are searching for a place where you can find truth, truth being Jesus, truth being doctrine, truth being the ethics that make for civil living and intentional living and visionary living, the church is that institution mandated with the responsibility of shaping culture correctly. The Bible calls it the pillar and the ground of truth. Are we learning now? It is based on this definition that our regular convergence as believers are truths. That number one, reveal Jesus. Number two, equip the believers. Number three, help in contributing to the moral, the spiritual, the economic stability of a region, the church. The church is not just a place for Christians. The church is a ground and the pillar of truth. Two more scriptures. Are you blessed? Hebrews chapter 10, please. We'll read verse 24 and 25. Hebrews chapter 10. The Bible says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. 20, 25. It says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching the bible says as an institution do not neglect the assembling of ourselves together say after me the church is an institution now i know that sociologically we call it a religious institution well from a secular standpoint we agree but from a kingdom standpoint, the church is not a religious institution. The church is a real institution. Are we together? Valuable to God. Valuable for nation building. Valuable. The church is the principal contributor for uh, as far as the, the um, moral correctness 
of a territory is any territory without the church will be a territory of lawlessness and mayhem and carelessness and indiscipline and lack of responsibility. When you know this as a man of God and when you know this even as a state, you will respect ministers, not just as some religious by gods who are around indoctrinating people with uh, some kind of spiritual ideas. No, we are contributors to nation building because we are bringing principles that are applicable here and now. Even though spiritual in context, but they have their applicability everywhere. The church is an institution. Are we together? Next time you are, you are listing the institutions that you have, we have educational institutions that are mandated with the responsibility of making sure that secular education happens within a territory, that people are academically enlightened. We have all kinds of institutions. We have the judiciary as an institution mandated with the responsibility of making sure that justice and fairness and equity is protected. We have a political system as an institution mandated with the responsibility of leadership and governance. The church is an institution. Whenever you are confused about life, whenever you are confused about purpose, whenever you are confused about destiny, whenever you need to find God, whenever the devil is oppressing you and buffeting your life left, right and center, whenever you are, find, you are looking for a place where you find a family of like-minded people, the solution is the church. Can I tell you this? When you want to make good friends, come to the church. Ah, apostle, church? Yes, sir, church. Forget about your experience. The church. The church. There is no guarantee from Scripture that God said, I will tabernacle in a bank. There is no guarantee from Scripture that God said, I will tabernacle in a classroom. There is no guarantee from Scripture that God said, where you gather in the law court, I am there. <clears throat> but God made a covenant with his house that his presence would jealously be represented in his house. So as an institution, the church is the principal avenue for learning the ways of God. The manual for the growth and the maturity of the believers in the church is the Bible. In partnership with the Holy Spirit. If the Bible is administered outside of the leadership of the Holy Spirit, it just becomes a historic material. The Bible only comes alive when the ministry of the Holy Spirit is honored. And then we are taught the ways of God. We are mentored and we are guided. Listen to me. Please hear me, believers. During the pandemic... Last year, sadly, when there was a lockdown for about three months or thereabout, do you know how many people's lives went down, spiritually and otherwise? Because there are people based on their background, they have no family anywhere. There are people who have lost father, listen to me, people who have lost mother, the only family they have literally is the church. Do we agree on that? There are people who support, financial support, comes from the church. There are people today educated because they were part of the church. There are people who have found purpose and meaning to their lives because they were part of the church. You cannot tell how many people today who have found relevance in their lives only because they came to the church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house. That is why the church is called the house of God. If you are looking for love, you will find it in the church. If you are looking for family, you will find it in the church. Apostle, but my biggest pain has come from the church. That is because the devil also came to the church. So we have to get him out of the church. He's not invited. There are people today when they lose loved ones, they have nobody to come and mourn with them but the church. 
There are people today, when it's time for celebration, marriage, children, whatever it is, it is the church that comes to rally around them. There are people when they are in pains today, nobody can stand but the church. Never you ignore the church as an institution. The church is that one family. There are two kinds of families on earth. There is the physical family that is of biological origin. But there is the spiritual family. The spiritual family is a real family. If you are in church, you must have this family mentality. Coming to church is like coming home. The only place where God can accept you as you are. While he's changing you. Can I tell you this? If you ignore the church, there are many things you will not be able to achieve. There are times that your fire can go down and then you come to the church and you sit down. You know, sitting and hearing the testimonies of these precious people and I'm wondering, what if there was no church? There was no church for three months and some people did not just backslide. They just went completely. It's like they... Do you know that Moses' absence for 90 days... You know what he came back and met? These were people who were calling upon Yahweh. Moses went up the mountain, not that he went to sleep. He went to meet God. He came back and found an idol that was made with the precious gold that God gave them. And they said, this be the God that brought us out of Egypt. Moses was angry. He made them grind that thing to powder and drink it. And God punished him because of it. You, you, you see how this thing works? He had to go and carve that rock by himself. Can I tell you this? I know that many of you have been wounded from church. I know many of you have had bitter experiences from church. But regardless what has happened, church still remains your zone of safety. Can I tell you this? I repeat, the church is the safest place. Everybody cannot be a devil. All you need is to find one person who loves you genuinely. One person who loves Jesus genuinely. One person who prays genuinely. And I can tell you there are enough people in every true church to communicate the love of Christ. Hallelujah. It is God's idea and it is his intention that every believer becomes part of a larger community of believers. For the purpose of, you see, community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. It's going to be difficult for you to excel in isolation. So, when God picks you, he connects you to a larger body of believers. It is your assignment to connect indeed. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. This is the place. Where my life is changed. Let me tell you this. By the privilege of leadership, especially for many years and even now, largely among young people, I have learned the power of the church as an institution. I have met people who have lost father, lost mother, and literally have had to depend on the church for everything that their physical family would give them. I have had the privilege, and I say this to the glory of the name of Jesus, of helping to raise people literally, some from primary school, secondary school, even university, the church. There are people today who would never go to school if they were not in church. There are people today who would never get a job 
if they were not in church. There are people today who would never find love if they were not in church. There are people today who would never even be able to bury their loved ones if they were not in church. There are people today who would never have been able to marry if they were not in church. There are people who would never be able to take care of their children if they were not in church. The church is not a disadvantage. Please find a way of, of believing this tonight. The church as an institution. There are people who hate anything church. And they bring all kinds of stories and all kinds of memories. They tell you the church is a place where there are corrupt people. There are politicians. There are devils there. Do you stop using the road because there was an accident there? That is the only road available. The church is a blessing. Jesus is the head of the church. If you don't trust the body, trust the head. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat myself. If you don't trust the body, trust the head. The body may fail, but the head may never fail. He will never fail. The church is an institution. So as you gather week in, week out, here in Koinonia and all of the churches that are scattered represented in the body of Christ, I want you to have this mindset. Whenever you pick your Bible, you pick your children, and you are on your way to church, remember this, that number one, the church is a spiritual strategy. Number two, I am that church. In addition to God's strategy, I am the host and then the executor of his will and his plans and his purposes. His purposes depend on me. He can do without me, but he has chosen to involve me in his program. So you don't go to church as a second class citizen. I'm not the one leading worship. I'm not the head of department. I am just a regular worker. Did you know sometimes people send me text messages and they say, Apostle, uh, good afternoon, sir. I am a regular or I'm just an ordinary koinonia member. And sometimes even when I don't want to reply, I'm tempted to reply, there are no ordinary members here. Everyone is the church. The nature of our work may seem to provide some level of elevated positions, but I tell you, intrinsically, every single one, as far as Christ is concerned, we carry equal value. The value and the price being the blood of Jesus. Are we blessed? And I advocate this and I, I cry and call on men and women of God as much as possible Give honor to whom honor is due, but we must be careful so that we do not allow the broken and those who feel that they are no good come to church again and further feel miserable simply because you are not wearing a designer's, simply because you don't seem to speak very fluently. I made it as a personal commitment as a man of God that when it has to do with honor, I will communicate honor to all men and to those deserving of honor. But when it has to do with my disposition towards men, I will treat everybody with love and I will treat everybody with sincerity. If I am giving a hug, I'm not going to hug you because you are rich or because you are holding an envelope. And then hug another person and look at him and almost be asking, what are you doing here? No. No. It has never been my philosophy to treat people as far as my attention is concerned, based on whatever it is. No. Whoever your father is, whoever your mother is, whoever you are, thank God for your pedigree. You will be given honor that is commensurate to your sacrifice. But as far as my mindset and my understanding is concerned, everybody who God brings to this place is a valuable and a special person. In truth, I may not be able to reach everybody. I wish I could. I really will. Sadly, I'm not able to do so. But I'm using this message tonight. To talk to you and to talk to our global family. That as far as Joshua Selman is concerned and Koinonia is concerned, there are no ordinary members. 
Everybody who was purchased with the blood of Jesus is a special and a unique person. Whether you sit inside, whether you sit outside. I remember during the graduation of the School of Ministry students. Um, I was walking around. Usually that's what I do. Because I'm not preaching. So I was walking around and I was almost going to look for a place to sit. And all these, my security and protocol people, they would not let me rest. They were doing their job, you know. And I was standing and people were watching me as though it was Jesus Christ. And I said, come on, listen, listen. I'm a human being. My mother is alive. My father is alive. It is only the privilege of God's grace. I only sit here because of leadership, because of protocol, and because of the assignment. The day I'm not doing that assignment, I should be able to sit anywhere and feel comfortable. If I cannot do that, I'm only insecure. It has nothing to do with God. Because my value is not based on the position. My value is the revelation of who I am. Learn this. Are we together now? So, if you find me seated somewhere up there, and I sit in between two people, and I'm listening to the word of God and say, wow, powerful, this is great. Chances are that you can even be uncomfortable there. Believers, listen to me. I have an assignment to see that you are grounded in truth. And that every time you say church, so for people who neglect the gathering of the believers and they say church is just in the heart, correct them and say you are right but not completely right. There is something you only receive when believers are gathered together. Are we together now? That corporate gathering, Psalm 133, behold how good and pleasant... It is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible says it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bed, to his skirt, to his garment, and so on and so forth. He says, there God had commanded the blessing. Hallelujah. Now there are two things we are going to do before we pray. Please rise everybody. I'm going to give you a little task in one minute. You're going to walk around to as many people as you can find in one minute. And even if it is to appreciate them and greet them and tell them we are the church. You are valuable. You are blessed. Bless them with all your heart. Don't waylay anybody. Go ahead. Make sure you're doing it inside and outside. Honor them and appreciate them sincerely. You don't have to know them. Together we are the body of Christ. Regardless what you believe, regardless what you don't believe, regardless what family you come from. It's a culture. Now please return back to your seat rejoicing. Hold hands together if you can. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. The walls the bright. And prejudice shall be when we are your instruments. Listen to me, let me encourage you. Never make it a culture, never look down on anyone. 
in terms of stratification, in terms of finances, in terms of spiritual exposure, in terms of enlightenment, the truth is we are not at the same level. Nevertheless, you should be comfortable to hug somebody whose father is some relegated thing somewhere. This is the church. They should be able to find that kind of love without explanation. Love without reason. The moment you have a reason, it is no longer love. So someone comes to sit near you and you frown your face because you are all wrapped up in your designer. They say, turn to your neighbor and you just look at, don't you turn? No, 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 no. You may be saying no to the next 10 years of your life. Can I tell you this? There have been times before, you know, God made me a known face. There were times when people began to hear about me and what God was doing. But because the people had never seen me, they did not know this was the apostle. And, you know, it was not the best of experience. And then when they did find out that I was that man of God, they suddenly came back with some uh, hypocritical approach. And I said, no, no, no. The first you is the real you. That you that did not behave well is the real you. So make it a point of duty. The first core value in this ministry is love, not power, love. Everything is motivated by love. Are we together now? Yes. That when they share the grace, you don't just stand up and carry your children and you push everybody and go out. No. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. You are going to walk after the service. Oh, God bless you. This is very important. You may think this is just some childish Christian thing, but you may be healing. Someone right now may be listening to me. And finally, people are looking for a home more than a sermon. People are looking for a home. You can listen to a sermon online. You cannot find a home online. There is a difference between listening to teachings online and being in the presence of God here. A place of genuine laughter and love. No pretense. Are we together? It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Some of you, if you had, if you had your way, you would reject that part of the song. I don't need you to stop. You do, you do. Come to terms with it. Listen, God is not ashamed to declare how vulnerable He is towards us. I need you to be an effective preacher. No matter how anointed I am, your coming here, among the many things that it does, is it validates the fact that we are a blessing. There is nothing to tell lies about. There is nothing to be ashamed about. You see, when people know you are sincere, they will love you truly. But when you are playing games and doing all of these things, the people would let you know they are not stupid. When people come here and there is room for interpretation, maybe the miracle service, the moment I understand they are struggling to speak English, I tell them, say any language. Be comfortable. I'm not going to respect and honor you just because you are speaking Polish Queen's English. That is an advantage, but not the basis for the love. Provided you name the name of Christ, you deserve to be loved. I pray tonight that this teaching will help to build our understanding and make us very, very mature believers. We're going to pray. Our time is gone. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me to be effective as your battle acts as the man that you will use in this season please we are praying and then number three as part of this institution called the church lift your voice and pray let it be from the depth of your heart i am your battle acts use me for your glory in whatever way you see and however you please go ahead and pray I will go I will go everywhere you lead me 
I will go. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me, I will go. I will go. I will go. I am your battle act to whatever nation, to whatever region, whatever the responsibility is. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes. Someone is praying. Lord, I am that available battle act. Sharpen me and make me ready to be used, especially in this time. Lord, if you're healing someone in this nation, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this city, please don't do it without me. We are praying, don't be tired. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say to me, whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do. Listen, whoever you want to heal. Lord, you can hear whoever you want to change. Lord, you can change. Very powerful song. I'm available. Use me for the change. Use me for the healing. Let me not be the one causing the pain. But bring in the healing. Whoever you want to bless, whoever you want to save, whoever you want to transform, oh God, I'm here as your church. Find comfort in using me. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. And we're done. Please hear me. We must pray first for Koinonia and then for every church as a local assembly and every platform that provides a gathering of believers. Can I tell you, we cannot lose the church as an institution. Westernization should not be the reason why we lose the gathering of the saints. There is a blessing. The church is a platform for mentorship that builds, that trains, that equips. It is the place where people can find God. The church is a city of refuge. The church is akin to the ark of Noah. When rain was about to fall, they found a place of safety. Are we together? This is your house. Your own, we welcome you, Lord. We welcome you. This is your house, your own, we welcome you. Last prayer point 
the grace to be an active part of this institution called the church. Lift your voice and pray. Active through in gathering, active as a worker, active as an as a participant, not a fan. There are no fans in the church. There are active people praying, serving, bringing souls, providing financial resources. Lord, whatever role I have to play to keep this institution that is the pillar and the ground of truth alive, I obtain grace. Go ahead to pray. Pray for every local assembly you know. Lord, keep them. Keep that institution. Keep the building from being idolized. But let it become a center for transformation. A center for salvation. A center for encounters. The house of God. It is only in the house that God has commanded the blessing. May His favor be upon and a thousand generations. Your family. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations. Receive it as a blessing. That's what you get when you come to church. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations. Your family. Amen. We pray that Koinonia will remain a place of encounters. We pray that Koinonia will remain a place of revelation. We pray that Koinonia will remain a place of transformation. We pray that Koinonia will remain the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare from tonight's teaching that we are willing to be sharpened battle axes that you will use to beat down the gates of darkness. Lord, we declare that we are the men and women you have found worthy to become hosts of your presence and advancers of your purposes. And Lord, we thank you for this family, Koinonia. We thank you for every church and every ministry represented in the body of Christ. Oh God, strengthen the bond of fellowship. Bring unity over your body. Let all the walls of the divides, the prejudices, and all the things that divide us and weaken our strength, I pray, oh God, that they will fade in light of what you are doing. But as for this ministry, I pray that you will increase our bond of love. You will increase our bond of fellowship. That in truth, we will love one another without discrimination. We will love one another without favoritism. We will love one another in spite of our different levels of stratification. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit ourselves to love one another. We commit ourselves to loving you. And we pray that in and through our lives, Jesus will be revealed. 
We pray by extension, O oh God, committing our global family scattered across all the nations of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray that that bond of unity and that bond of love will rest upon every one of us. We pray for the teachings, the principal channel that you have used to extend your blessing through us to the nations. Lord, anoint those teachings afresh. May they go across the length and the breadth of this nation and across the globe. May they bring salvation. May they bring healing. May they bring liftings in the name of Jesus Christ. And as for you, because you came to church tonight, I decree, may the Lord bless you. I decree, may the Lord prosper you. I decree, may the Lord reveal himself to you. I decree that everything that has mocked God concerning your life, as a result of your coming tonight, I prophesy and I declare that it ceases from happening in your life. I sense in my spirit that there are people who, whilst they heard this our brothers and sisters sharing their testimony of financial miracles, their hearts were just open and they said, Oh, that God would step in for me. The prophetic dimension to activating wealth, like I've always thought, is not a license for laziness. But there are times when you are in the sea. There are times when your net is good. There are times when your fishing skill is there, but you will still not catch fish. At that point, you do not need fishing skill. You need Jesus. And for those who have exhausted all that they know to do, and it looks like financial doors are not opening, I prophesy to you, in the name that is above all names, return with strange miracles. Please just help those under the anointing. Everyone here who is sick in his body, the devil has taken advantage of you, not the church. The church is a place where we separate light from darkness. I decree and declare that everything that represents darkness in your life, let it be far from your life now. And everything glorious in your life that you have lost, for, the, for people here, there are people, the proverb, Ichabod, seems to be the proverb around your life. I declare, may that proverb never be heard around your life again. Every business here, hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare, the grace to excel, let it come upon you. Every dormant gift that is lying down within you, I decree and declare that gift is activated. And all those who can discern and reward that gift, I call them to pay attention to you. Hear me? If there is anyone here whose spiritual life is going down, prayer life going down, your passion for God going down, don't feel condemned. And don't feel like there is no hope for you. This is the church. The place where you find hope. Therefore I decree and declare. Fresh fire upon your spiritual life. For everyone here who has been bereaved. And is in and through any kind of emotional pain. We decree and declare. Let the healer bring healing right now. And we stand here prophetically and we lend our voices together with many who are praying over Nigeria, over Africa, over Abuja. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the purposes of God will be established in our land. In the name of Jesus. And every controlling power over this territory, the territory of the FCT, the nation of Nigeria, the continent of Africa, we lend our voices as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a united force, we decree and declare, like Dagon fell before the ark, we declare that every altar that does not project Jesus, let it fall before the ark of his presence. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. In Jesus' name.
Please, everyone, remain standing. Let me plead with us. Just give me two minutes. Let's be disciplined. Two minutes. Let me make the altar call. Please, no moving around. Just two minutes, and we're done. There are people here. God has given you an opportunity to hear this word tonight. You came from various places. Please, let's minimize movement. It's, it's a culture. Listen, you have to train yourself in the house of God. Patience for two, three minutes will not stop you from doing what you're doing. As much as possible, whenever the altar call is coming, except otherwise, let's just discipline ourselves to receive them and then we'll wrap up. There are people here across the balcony, here in the main auditorium, all the overflows, and following online. You are saying, Apostle, I've heard you teach and I want to become part of the church. The church is not just men. Men who are in Christ. Men who have accepted the free gift of salvation. Two categories of people I want to call quickly. Number one, those who are saying, I need Jesus as a matter of life and death. Number two, those who are saying, Apostle, my life has gone haywire. I need restoration to my Christian experience. If you belong to any of these two categories, I'm going to count one to five. Please, very quickly, I'd like you to rush and come and stand. Be very bold. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Who is this King of glory? Keep coming. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Keep coming. Amen. So is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For thy Hallelujah. Now, before I pray for all those who have come to give their heart to Jesus, let me just make one very important announcement. Please let me have your attention. By God's grace, our medical team um, is embarking on an outreach to one of the IDPs here in, Kadu in, in uh, I was going to say Kaduna, in Abuja. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you happy to celebrate Jesus? Amen. Um, can I have Dr. Chai please come? He's the head of the medical team. Please quickly just come. Now, the medical team is searching for volunteers. Volunteers who will participate in the medical outreach. Particularly, they are looking for doctors, nurses, lab scientists, and pharmacists. All interested persons, please, if you are interested in being part of this outreach, is a noble cost. When is it? The date? 4th of December. So we have just on Saturday. On the 4th of December, you're a paramedic, you're a medical person, and you feel that this is an opportunity, you want to be part of it, please, immediately after the service, he's going to be standing right here. You can come and meet him and say, I want to be part of it. And probably you want to just come in and support them in whatever way. We are taking responsibility as a ministry, but then we're also going to open up doors should you want to do anything without coercion, by revelation, from a heart of love, please feel free to do it. And so this is where test running our humanitarian services. So the medical team is leading on this and we want to see that we're able to bless the people and to bless God's people. There are so many people at that IDP camp and we want to just supply food, medicals and see how probably we sink a borehole or two or just do something for the community. God is granting us grace in the name of Jesus Christ. So please, immediately after the service, you want to be part of this uh, as a volunteer. Please do well to see doctor. He'll be waiting there. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I celebrate every one of you for coming. Thank you so much for making this bold decision. Please lift your right hand high above your head. And I want you to pray this prayer. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again 
for my justification. Tonight, I have heard your word. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that you are my Savior, you are my Lord, and you are my King. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today, I live a victorious Christian life, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. We love them so. They have come before you, making their declaration to start a new life in Christ. I pray by the authority of Scripture that their sins are forgiven. And I decree and declare that you enjoy the ministry of the Word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Thank you and congratulations. May I request that you just move to my right. There are a few counselors who will just attend to you within a minute or two and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Let's celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. And then um, maybe I would want to say this next week, by the grace of God, the 28th, will be our last miracle service. Not the last service, but the last miracle service for the year 2021. Please let me encourage you. Everyone you love and seriously intend for them to receive the power of God, healings, miracles, restoration, whatever it is, do well to inform them. Five on the dot we're starting. And then... On Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I will be in Zaria. Wednesday for a teaching program. Thursday for the graduation of our School of Ministry students. And then Friday for the last miracle service for Zaria. For the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for your patience. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.